um, unless he doesn't, does not sin. So we're here to provide that service to you. Um, I don't mean to not um, mention um, NAC at Fort Bristol. Welcome. My nephew, uh, Mr. Uh, John Brady, and his, um, his membership are here. So we're well represented, and we have other re representatives coming from Texas, too. So that's how far um, a Native American church in North America is, is uh, um, spread out through the United States, Western United States, west of you know, um, the Mississippi, and just one from New York. So just wanted to mention that to you. You're welcome um, to relax and enjoy your moment here, because this is one of the very few times there's only been half held here twice, the NACNA conference convention. So this is like the third one. So with that, I welcome everyone here. Um, we are very privileged to be here with you, also here as your uh, servitudes, as members, paid members of Native American Church. Uh, if you look at our bylaws, the bylaws said a church cannot exist without, um, without members. <gasps> So we have to have a member. So people ask me, can I just buy a card? You can't just, I just can't write a card out for anybody or a membership ID for any person to ask me. It has to go through the affiliate chapters. The affiliate chapters are the one that pays the fee to have their, um, the floor to be recognized on the floor. So that's how the NACNA is structured. So for membership is the same way to become a Native American church in North America national card um, holder, you have to go through your affiliate chapter to be recognized by your affiliate chapter before you can buy a card with the Native American Church in North America. So that's how it works. Um, I just want to make sure, to, and these are term memberships. Term membership means that you can buy a card for um, three years. So let's say everyone that bought a card 2021 Next year is the election year, so that's when the cards will end. So anybody that buys a national card today or this this year is only valid for one year. Must make you understand that. So that's how we have our organization is structured. Uh, we have um, Arizona has six um, Native American church affiliated chapters. As I mentioned, there's Steamboat Canyon, there's Half Moon. Fireplace. There's also Cove, Red Valley. There's also um, the Nap Na Nestiza chapter. There's also um, Shanto. So these are one of the, the, the few that I've mentioned are tall chapters and on your reservation near your homes, and that's how you can become a field. We also have our neighbor New Mexico here too. So. With that, I hope you have some understanding. So kind of look yeah. around and see who all the, the, your close relatives are that are in, um, that live nearby, who are interested in purchasing a membership card. That's how it's purchased through. The national card is purchased for a Native American Church of North America. Thank you for your time. Okay. So I want to uh, thank uh, my uh, treasurer, Mr. Watson, and our vice president, Mr. Holgate. You know, um, I just want to, uh, you know, like I expressed earlier, you know, um, I appreciate everyone for coming out, for uh, um, listening and um, hear what we have to uh, address here today. You know, this is something that y'all have heard before. You know, it's just, um, here we are uh, today, 2023. You know, we, we all know the uh, challenges that we're facing out there. You know, so we're trying our best to uh, advocate uh, you know, our, our way of life protection, because um, we all know all the uh, ways, spiritual, no matter what uh, ceremony, circle, no matter what uh, um, it may be, seem like it's all under it, a attack. You know, <clears throat> whether it be, you know, um, people uh, might be, um, you know, charging for prayer, whether it be selling your prayer, selling your sacred, you know, items, your holy um, 
spiritual tools. You know, um, I know uh, we all miss our elders' sayings, what they used to say once upon a time. I really miss that here today. I look around and and uh, <clears throat> some of my go-to uncles, <laughs> my aunties, you know, they're, they're no longer around. You know, because um, y'all, I'm sure each and every one of you, you'll miss that too as well. Because we all don't want to be any old way down the road as Native American church relatives. We don't want to be winging it, taking shortcuts. Oh, uncle ain't here. Oh, it'll be all right. It's okay. Auntie's not here, you know. No. God, the creator, we all know. He has big ears and big eyes. He sees all and knows all. So here we are today. We're trying to do the uh, best that we can. All the laws that we're governed by. Just like our treasurer was saying, these membership cards, you know, sometimes um, it might, uh, oh, I heard comments, uh, oh, we don't need that to, uh, you know, to pray or to go over here, go over there, you know, but in the reality, all the laws that were governed by their every everything is on these cards, you know. And then, uh, as a national organizations, we we have our, our your picture on there as well. So we're, we're we're trying to stay in tune of society here today, you know. Uh, the system that we have, you know, kind of basically, you can uh, scan it in a way that it'll it'll, it'll pull your uh, credentials up in a way, you know, uh, about who you are. You know, things like that, you know, so we could be just like other people out there. We could have nice facilities, we could have the nice parking lot, nice church grounds. You know, why not us as Native American church people? If everyone would be in tune and harmony of way grandma and grandpa said once upon a time, Today, I know if, if we express what we used to hear, I know sometimes people get their feelings hurt. People, uh, you know, get discouraged. Or you're trying to act some way or be some kind of way. No, we're just trying to uphold to the, uh, the old timers' ways and teachings, how they used to say once upon a time. So we, we come down here, to just like our, our treasurer was saying, a work session. You know, I think a lot of times these uh, uh, business meetings, convention, and uh, quarterly, and mid-year, it seems like you can't get enough done. We try to, like, uh, just rush through everything, and I think, uh, to be honest, I think we could, about four, four days, you know, we could have a, a, a lot of nice... Um, ideas you know we could bring in the game and fish department they could talk about the feathers we could bring in the border uh customs talk about you know all that there and the medicine we can bring in all this um these federal governments you know um so we can talk to them one-on-one -on -one. we need to uh, uh uh express to uh department of justice Interior of uh, the Secretary, Homeland Security, all these uh, kind of um, positions, we as Native American Church, we're trying our best to uh, advocate, we're trying our best to uh, share our concerns that we have. From last June, we've been uh, boots on the ground, my good relatives. And I really thank my officers. I want to thank our delegates that we have. We have 13, 14 delegates from different uh, states and provinces. We have uh, 26, 27 chapters affiliated. So what we're trying to do is uh, get more membership. It's not for the money. It's 250. No. We want everyone to unite. We want everyone to come together because as the P.O. Taros in Texas, the landowners, they want to work with us. 
But they say we have to have some structure. We can't just open it up to everyone. We got to have some kind of structure in a way of, um, you know, a uh, paper trial, in, in a way of, um, you know, duties and responsibilities. Because we all know someone probably leave the gate open or somebody's going to throw trash on somebody and then the ranchers are not going to like it. So they, they mentioned, well, I said, your organization, how many chapters do you have? I said, we have 26 to 27. I expressed everything. I said, uh, this was six years ago. They said, well, all this many years, they did not know these Pioteros leased their land and that they would go pick this medicine, take it home and sell it. About three-fourths of them were pretty upset. And well, they say, next spring, February, y'all come back down. You're all welcome. But we got to be structured. So that's why we're trying to rally up chapters to the NACNA. Okay, maybe the first day, Thursday, okay, the uh, Native American Church of Shanto, Native American Church, South Dakota, Native American Church of, um, you know, Manitoba, North Dakota. You guys are going to go over here. First day, pick medicine. Second day, you're going to go over, vice versa. You know, we're, 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 we're trying to... Uh, so, Basically, we don't want nobody left out. That's what we're trying to do. We don't want anybody left out, relatives. Because we all know it takes a long gas, expenses, and this medicine is getting really expensive. So we are some way, somehow, through the relationships of um, the landowners that maybe... Uh, through the Creator, maybe through everyone's prayer, that it could be back to how it used to be once upon a time. But, you know, as us, as Native people, you know, we, uh, we try to do the best that we can to try to uphold to the, uh, the elders' teachings, the fireplace, the protocol, the etiquette, all those duties and responsibilities. So we've been uh, advocating so everything that we're doing, uh, good relatives, is that we need tribal government support. We can go to Capitol Hill. We can go to the uh, state level, senators, the U.S. House of Representatives. We can tell them until we're blue in the face. But what's their first question? Does your tribe support it, what you're trying to do? So that's why my good relatives were... We're, uh, we're trying to have your uh, tribe's support of the initiatives of uh, this peyote uh, preservation, this conservation initiative. So I want to commend uh, Northern Arapaho tribe for their uh, tribal support. I want to commend the Oglala Nation for a resolution, tribal support of the initiatives. I want to thank... Uh, the Rocky Boy Chippewa Cree Tribe for all their uh, for their support They're at the uh, tribal level and at the state level, and then our local Fort Berthold Native American Church chapter MHA Nation and other uh, chapters. Shanto they did a, a rezo, and I believe um, a, a, a chapter called Dene. Chapter Window Rock. Window Rock. They've done another uh, support letter. So we, we all know there's more chapters, there's more tribes than that, my good relatives. I know Omaha is in the works. They want to come down here as the tribal council. They want to be on the agenda. They, they want to uh, support the efforts of what we're doing, my good relatives. You know, we ain't some big uh, corporation with thousands of dollars where we can fly over here or fly over there. I know we're trying to do the best that we can. Sometimes, you know, we have to, we have to uh, let the uh, car payment buy. Or we might have to let some bills buy just because we have to go advocate the awareness of this holy medicine. We're trying to do these good, wonderful things, relatives.
It's something that our elders, our uncles, our grandmas, our aunties want us to do. Because we're all, you look around, you're all an answered prayer. You're a product of your grandparents' prayers. Who ever thought we would be sitting here at this college and being in tune of this Native American church, this peyote? Because we're trying our best. We, we, uh, we all know this um, American Indian Religious Freedom Act has helped us for this many years. But what we're doing, my relatives, we're not changing the ARFA. I know there's hearsay out there saying, oh, NACNA, John Brady's, uh, you know, um, administration, you know, they're messing with ARFA. No, we're not. May I say that again? We're not messing with American Indian Religious Freedom Act, my good relatives. What we're doing is enforcing the federal government to uphold the federal trust responsibilities where this holy medicine needs to be just in a bona fide area, a ceremonial setting. You can't be over here at the flea market walking around eating medicine. Or you can't be at the movies, you know, things like that, that the... Uh, the um, <clears throat> federal government should be right over there in the blink of an eye. These federal governments should be at all these mainstream, all these uh, non-native interests out there. They should be there. I said, hey, what are you guys doing? This peyote is federally protected. So what we're trying to do is... Uh, we're trying to recharge. We're trying to in enforce it. That's what we're doing, my good relatives. We're not trying to add anything. We're, trying, we're not taking anything away. Just like the fireplaces. Everyone, these fireplaces, we all know it came from our good Southern Plain relatives. It's a borrowed way. So we look around. We're thankful that we can uh, utilize these fireplaces I want to commend the roadmen that are upholding to those duties and responsibilities. Those water women, I want to thank you all for doing the woman role, the roadmen duties and responsibilities. The drum chiefs, the drummers, I want to thank you all for doing what you're supposed to be doing. The cedar chief, same way. The fire chief, same way. So in this uh, position here, my good relatives, to me, it's just a title as president. I never thought I'd be at this national organization and taking lead. But about two years ago, this is what the uh, chapters, you know, wanted to do. So this is all due to me, relatives too, as well. I'm learning as we go. I'm trying to do the best that we can. I'm going to thank my awesome wife here for always supporting me. And being by my side. And making me look good as well with her expertise. So I want to uh, say, say this many words here. So uh, what we're doing is we're, we're enforcing. We need more enforcement on the ARFA, our good relatives. We have, we're doing all of these uh, things. We have a bunch of paperwork, that a, a menu full of it of what we're doing, of resolutions, of statements from the U.S. House of Representatives. We've been getting a, a good uh, comments. Not only this medicine is going to be protected, this peyote, the U.S. Uh, Natural uh, the, uh, Resource Subcommittee, it was music to our ears when they said not, it's only not going to cover the peyote, it's going to cover sacred sites, all ceremonies, and language, my good relatives. That's what it's going to do. And this is going to be years. This, but to the power of prayer, if everyone can all be in tune, one mind, one heart, one prayer, 
It could be awesome. It's like today, it's good news in Indian country. We all heard the good news of the Indian Child Welfare Act. We uh, yeah. yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it, good relative. That's awesome. That's how wonderful, God. That's how wonderful your prayers. Your prayers are strong. Your prayers are wonderful. So uh, I just want to uh, say that. And then uh, this five million, we uh, were uh, boots uh, on the ground at Capitol Hill. It was really nice to see Native American church relatives in the midst of all these different nationalities, all these different programs. Boots on the ground here for this holy medicine. This five billion that we're advocating for. Where the Department of Interior will establish a program and they will minister the, the funds to the private landowners that want to participate. So I just want to kind of say about that much. I'll, uh, I'll save some more, but I encourage you all to come back. Tomorrow and Saturday, we have a good lineup of uh, um, encouragement of speakers. This convention, my good relatives, I want it to be the good encouragement energy, the history energy, all the duties and responsibilities, vibes and feelings. I didn't want it to be who got the bylaws, who didn't get the bylaws, T's, that th this T wasn't crossed, this I wasn't dotted. We want it to be encouraging. We want you all to come in here and to absorb all the goodness from the presenters these next few days. And I know all of you come through this door with good thoughts and good feelings, with good intentions. Because we're all Native American church family. We're all family. So with that being said, I'm going to go down here to uh, our uh, ceremonial cultural dispossession exploitation, a statement that we did. So at this time, Mr. Uh, Ryan Wilson, our Native American Church of North America, our legislative chair. I'm going to have him come down if he's here yet. Nephew, where are you at? Oh, there he is, coming on down. Yeah, he makes a really fashionable late appearance and all that. <laughs> I, uh, John was talking about being elders. I find myself the elder here. These are my nephews, my little brother here. And I even have white hair yet. Uh, so that's where it is, the state of situation. Uh -huh. um, uh, Legislative Chair, Native American Church of North America, Mr. Um, Ryan Nephew. Wilson. Nephew? <clears throat> okay. I was just getting some clarification and I'm, I'm happy to be here. And just want to uh, say hello to you guys for putting this together. A lot of hard work, boy. I know they're going to get uh, all kinds of good accolades, but give the local host a big applause. Everybody, if you could do that too, you know. Thank you. We, uh, we're happy to be here on your land. And um, the trip down was a real uh, awesome too. And we... Um, uh, I feel good because it's the third time now I brought rain when I come down this way. You know, it's raining real good, so I won't take the credit, you know, but it just makes you feel good. And we got to see the uh, rainbows and everything, so I'm, I'm happy to be here. And I'm going to um, share a little bit on Saturday as well, relatives. And I'll be here to answer any questions. Uh, any of us can also, Justin especially, uh, but to answer any questions that you may have if um, I didn't cover anything sufficiently enough while, while the short time that we have. So don't, um, 
Don't be shy. You can uh, catch us in any time, and we'll we'll try to explain uh, what we're all what we're all doing here um, with your good blessings um, too. So, my name's Ryan Wilson, and I uh, reside up in uh, Fort Berthold Indian Reservation. I've been there now 14 years, but I'm from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and was uh, raised out in Wind River, uh, Wyoming, amongst the Arapaho people too. And one of the things we we're always taught when we were young, especially being uh, Lakota and uh, the way the Rappahoes are too, with their treaty rights, with uh, not being scared of lawsuits, not being scared of advocacy in the courts. We were always kind of um, explained from a young age about treaty-based appropriations, treaty-based educational rights. So here on Navajo, you guys, uh, if you look around at the schools, you know, how were those all built? And when, when you look at what Rayma did in creating that opportunity for us and, and late Bob Russell and them did at Rough Rock, the opportunity for us to contract and run our own schools and to have a, a, a say in our own future and to do those types of things. And so what I'm explaining to you just real briefly is we, um, what Brother said with this Indian Child Welfare Act case today, it's really important because um, if we were to have lost, which most of the legal scholars thought we were gonna lose, not because we were wrong, but because of the makeup of the Supreme Court and their refusal to acknowledge federal Indian law, to acknowledge treaty rights, to acknowledge this political anomaly that exists in America, um, they would have gone after ARFA as well. They would have gone after Indian Gaming, the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act. They would have, you guys are in a, a historic battle over water rights here and your river and who controls that. Your senior water rights are in jeopardy too by the Supreme Court. And um, everything they're doing, but if they could have unraveled ICWA, if they would have been successful in that, they would have gone right after us too. And why am I saying that? Because there's efforts underway. Um, nobody's been honest about it yet. I challenge them to be honest, to come here and explain themselves to you, all of you. But there's efforts underway to open this up to the non-Indian world, their mainstream communities as well. And next week in Denver, we um, there's a conference. I'm, I'm trying to make a point here, and I'm gonna show you some of the workshops that are gonna be at that conference next week. And our own people are attending that conference to uh, be a part of this as well. And this is that called Psychedelic Renaissance. Write it down. 2023 Psychedelic Renaissance. There's going to be 10,000 people there in Denver. And we have some scholarships if anybody else wants to go to it as well to be an observer. But here's some of the things they're going to talk about at that conference, the non-Indians. And our own Indian people standing side by side with them too, some of them, a very few group, but they're gonna, one of the workshops is called Psychedelic Sacrament. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Another workshop is Psychedelic Churches. Psychedelic Exemption under the law. Psychedelic Nonprofit. How do you form a nonprofit that's for psychedelics? FDA, Federal Drug Administration Approval of Psychedelics. It's a workshop. The Patent Board, how to gain a patent on your psychedelics. Legal protection for psychedelic churches and insurance liability, protecting your psychedelic church from lawsuits. Those are just a handful of the workshops that are gonna be over there. There's also some workshops that our own people are hosting uh, called Indigenous Viewpoints on um, psychedelics and, and things like that. What I'm getting at here, they're trying to use our law, what was established under ARFA, the exemption. They're trying to use that to get all of their drugs and psychedelics legalized. And they're forming these fake churches called psychedelic churches, creating new religions right now, right, right here in 2023, and trying to say they're legitimate because they want to have this. And what they also want as a part of this whole psychedelic bandwagon is mescaline. 
So what we did, and again, anyone who wants to go to that, we, it's like a thousand dollars, but we have, we have some good people there that have set aside spots if you want to go and attend. Scholarships. And when I say attend, I don't mean join in on the psychedelics, I mean, <laughs> be observers for us, okay? <laughs> so yeah, we got scholarships, not for mushrooms, but just to be an observer, you know? So, so we all know we've never called this medicine psychedelic, anything. It's a good medicine to us. We all know that. And some of the old people are going to come and share and talk about it. But we ran into this one company called Journey Collab. And there's many companies trying to synthesize mescaline. There's many efforts to do that. But this one company made a bad mistake. They announced to their investors, and they announced to the FDA, they announced to the patent board, that they had initiated a tribal consultation effort, and that they had formed a... Um, a blueprint based off the Nagoya Protocols of the United Nations, which is called Free Prior Informed Consent. Yeah. And this is what they claimed. So when they're seeking startup dollars, they had 15 million in initial investors, and they're trying to shoot for like 100 million in investors. They claimed that we were all a part of this too. This mescaline, synthesized mescaline. What they want to do is they use a lab to extract this molecule and then as they synthesize it they um they're claiming that it's all man-made they're going to put it in a pill and if they can get fda approval then they'll also be eligible for medicaid and medicare why is that important then all of a sudden we're not talking about a few thousand dollars that are a few million dollars we're talking over a billion dollars that they can bill this company that's why they're seeking a patent, because they only want to be the only ones to have it. That's the whole point of a patent. So they're trying to patent synthesized mescaline and a proprietary therapeutic model. And we were really curious, well, what is that? What, what, proprietary means only they have it. And, and apparently they were basing it off of whatever the American Indian people that were consulting with them said they could do. I don't know if that means they're going to get in a circle and pass an eagle feather around and then take their synthesized mescaline and get better or what? I don't know. We don't really know. But this is what's going on out there. So we reached out to the CEO, um, Jishan Chowardy. He's the CEO. But they also, they also put on their webpage, and it's Journey Collab. You can get on their webpage right now, a, a white paper. And they said that they were going to give... I think it's 10% or 15% of their founding equity to indigenous communities. So why is this important? This is the new language we all got to get hip on. And it's not complicated language, but there's a new thing now these companies are calling shared benefit. So everybody write that down, shared benefit. There's another one they're calling reciprocity or reciprocity trust. That's what this particular company did. What they're really trying to say is, we're gonna share in the profits with you. We're gonna share in the profits with you as long as you okay this and green light it. Give it your, give it your stamp, your approval, your blessing, and you're gonna to get to join in the parade. And our, our own people were first in line, you know, like this. And we're finding out who they all were also. We're not going to say any names here, but um, it's not hard to figure out. So we, we started talking to different ones about how can we stop this? And it's really hard to stop. But we also felt it was important for history that we can tell our children and grandchildren and somewhere along the line that they can look back here in 2023 and see that Indian country stood up and said, no, you're, you're not to have shared benefit with us. Our shared benefit is you go do your churches over there, leave us alone. Leave peyote alone. Leave this mescaline alone. It's not for you. We benefit when you leave us alone. So we're going to share the benefit. You guys go over there, do whatever you're going to do, but leave us alone. And when we say that, we're not trying to be mean. This isn't being anti-white. It's being pro-Indian and pro-ARFA, 
pro our way of life. And so we, we created this joint statement and we asked Oklahoma Native American Church to join in with us. And, and they did. And then we asked the National Congress of American Indians to join in with us as well. So that's this. Um, so if you go to that document, it says joint statement on uh, cultural appropriation and exploitation. Yeah. And that's one of our um, one of our key documents this year. We sent that to the FDA, and what we said was, uh, "Journey Collab is just a symptom of a deeper problem. The real problem is that the United States of America hasn't had consultation, tribal consultation, the FDA, and the Patent Board with tribal governments." And we're trying to move this not from our organization's standpoint, we're trying to move it into the realm of tribal government sticking up for this as well. So this call on the FDA to reinvigorate their tribal consultation, it called on the patent board to have tribal consultation. And if there's any companies, besides Journey Collab, there's all kinds of companies trying to do this all over the world, not just here in America, all over the world, that they have to have tribal consultation from the boards that are going to authorize a patent. And why in the heck would the patent board authorize a patent off of our heritage molecule, off of, off of what our ancestors had to a company? But you know why they would do it is if we're quiet, if we say nothing, if we just watch and shrug our shoulders and say, well, it's just too far down the road, we can't stop it. Or as some of our some of our own people are saying is let's just join in. Let's join in and get our cut. Let's join in and get our shared benefit. Let's join in and get our reciprocity trust. So the reciprocity trust director for Journey Collab was Sutton King. And we reached out to her too in joint emails. She refused to answer any inquiries from us. And Jay Sean, the CEO, also refused to answer any inquiries from us. Until until relatives uh, when Brother uh, rolled out at our press release up in um, Shell Creek, when he rolled out this statement, when we sent it out all over, and when they knew Congress was getting it also through, through um, Mr. Daish's congressional testimony at the Interior Appropriations, then all of a sudden this storm kind of started the momentum. So three days ago, um, this gentleman, the CEO, he called me, we talked, and he's going to set up some type of a way he wants to apologize. Sutton King resigned her position as a reciprocity trust officer. She claimed that uh, she didn't want to be in a conflict of interest with her role at IPCI in her statement. And we have that statement as well. And we're going to talk about conflict of interest in a bit too. But um, he wants to figure out, you know, how to make things right with Indian country. And I've explained, you know, you, you just need to stay out of this. Whatever you want to do with ayahuasca, whatever you want to do with that toad, whatever you want to do with psilocybin mushrooms, that's not our jurisdiction. We're American Indians. We don't have those medicines. Those aren't ours. But peyote, it's up to us to protect it. So that's what we talked about. And then he's going to reach out, you know, and try to figure this out, how to, um, you know, back up a little bit. But he warned us that there's dozens of other companies also trying to synthesize mescaline, that they're not gonna stop, and that this is our new future. And one of our people, Ted Strong, um, out in Yakima Nation, does, how many people know Ted Strong? He was, they're one of our, our good supporters too. Ted Strong wrote a letter and made the point that uh, they, we heard all this before. It's a wonder drug, it's gonna fix everything, it's gonna get you off of addictions, it's gonna cure your post-traumatic stress syndrome, your trauma, your, your hysteria, anxiety, like a cure-all and a pill. Guess what that was that we're all living through now where we're burying young people every week, every week? Fentanyl. Street drugs that are manufactured in home-based labs and all of that. This is that Pandora's box that these guys open when they do that. And this is why it's scary. So this document, you know, we, it's, in, it's going to be in the packet, but we, we're proud of it. And it took us a long time because the Native American Rights Fund, they also vetted it. They had to look at it. They didn't sign it. We didn't ask them to. 
Um, but they wanted to make sure it was right, and their basis was also on intellectual property. Intellectual property. So the National Congress of American Indians, they also, that's the largest intertribal group of tribal governments, and they had to um, vet this as well. Justin had to vet it, and then NACNA and, and NACNA, uh, or NAC Oklahoma um, all signed that. So I, uh, the Oklahoma guys, um, they're a little more um, careful, and, and, and they're a little bit more laid back. Um, so it took them a little bit, you know, we had to wait till their uh, spring conference for them to look at this and take care of it and all that. But uh, I don't know if there's there any Oklahoma people here. We got one, all right. So my sister, and she represents all the tribes in Oklahoma, she does. Everybody give her a round of applause on behalf of uh, the Oklahoma. They, we need that, uh, the Bill of Ghana calls it collegiality. You guys know that word? Collegiality. They call it collaboration. And then we have, like, we like to laugh, right? We have comedy. They have another fancy word, it's called comedy with a T. It's getting along and respecting each other and doing that. So we were able to do that with Oklahoma, and I'm really happy about that. We did call Marion Vallot way back in the early process, asked if IPCI wanted to be part of this at River Sticks. Uh, their answer was, no thanks. So we want you guys to know that too. Now, this document, we're still sending it out. We're also asking the oversight committees uh, especially the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs, to write a letter to the FDA on our behalf as well, um, asking for this tribal consultation. So one, one other uh, document too, and I wanna, um, this one's old, this goes back, and it's linked, it's linked to this one, but this one goes back to 2009. We had the National Congress of American Indians. We, um, I wrote this little resolution way back then, and it was to create a working group or a task force at the National Congress of American Indians that would organize tribal leaders to advocate for us. So, and, I, and I, no offense to anyone in here, but Navajo Nation, they're so big, they don't want nothing to do with NCAI. They're, they speak for themselves. They don't want this group to speak for them. But the other tribes, there's many, many peyote tribes that are members of the National Congress of American Indians. And we just had a meeting a um, week and a half ago. Uh, John is the chair, co-chair of that task force, President Brady is. And we had Kyle was there, Lawrence Spotted Bird, their chairman, um, the tribal governor for the Cheyenne Arapaho tribe was there as well. And several other um, tribal dignitaries that were there. That's the venue where we're organizing, where we're organizing for the tribal leaders to engage in this tribal consultation, not just with FDA, but also with the White House, you know, on these issues. And this is a body that we also are in partnership with. And what we're trying to do is say, we can only take this so far, we know that as an organization, but the tribal governments can take it and get it over the finish line, what we're trying to do. So these two things are kind of linked and we want you to know tribal leaders were a part of this as well. And, um, and I made this point, I was, I was on KTNN radio a couple months ago, I made this point that uh, you guys here, you have your congressional delegation in, um, you know, Congresswoman Fernandez and, and Lujan and um, Heinrich over there, and, or over here in New Mexico, and then over there you have all your guys. But none of them are leading any congressional committees. None of them are leading any of the appropriation committees, the budget committees, anything like that. Yeah, and on the House, you know, we're even worse off with, with the leadership there. But these tribes, and this is where, especially us as Lakota, as Sioux, we're, we always kind of view like the whole world revolves around us. They call it ethnocentric. We're, we're like that. And then we get into, you know, we're the best, and, and, and in our hearts we kind of know that. But it's not that way. It's just a culture that we emanate. Well, we all do that with our tribes. But the only way this is going to work the only way this is going to work is that we have respect for all tribes. And there's this little tribe over in Fort Hall, Idaho. You guys all know where that is, right? Shobans, Shoshone, and Bannock. Their congressional rep is named Mike Simpson, and he chairs 
the House Appropriations Committee on Interior. So the whole interior budget he shares. So that little tribe, we have a document in here as well. There's a resolution and some other stuff they've done, but they're supporting this interior appropriations request for the conservation programs. Very powerful tribe because their congressman listens to them. He respects them. He's a Mormon, uh, which, which means us, us Indians are number one, you know? And uh, if you believe in that religion, Navajos know. <laughs> <laughs> so he's there then on the other house side we have the Arapahoes and um, my nephew here he's, he come a long ways to join us he's a tribal councilman for the Northern Arapaho Business Council Keenan Grosback if you guys could give him a warm welcome too for joining us for the first time as a, as a tribal delegate a tribal council leader his congresswoman as well um, Haglin's her name she's the one that beat Liz Cheney remember when Liz Cheney was impeaching Trump and they kicked her out you know that's how she lost but that gal is a freshman congresswoman never done anything in her life she's a freshman congresswoman and what did what did they do they put her in charge of the um, Indian Affairs Committee in the House of Representatives she's the chairwoman of that committee so the Arapahoes led by my nephew they're working very hard with her to protect ARFA and to protect peyote habitat, to protect conservation, what we're trying to do here. And she's gonna be working with us on that as well. And I, I could go down the line and give you a bunch of other examples. And in Hawaii, those native Hawaiians, they're running the show now on the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs because Brian Schatz is the chairman of the committee. We just met with them and his chief of staff and all the other people um, and they're, they're also gonna do something on peyote. They wanna do some hearings first. They wanna, he wants to do this very bad to work on this habitat preservation. And like President Bray said, not just for peyote, but all of our medicines that are on private land across America, how do we, um, how do we protect those as well? How do we work with private landowners in cooperation for what we need with our other medicines as well? And there's going to come a time in America, um, the, the, uh, the time's coming where they're just wiping everything out everywhere. These private landowners, they're going to be the ones having all kinds of medicines down the road. Picture in 100 years, 200 years. We have to start now to figure out a way where the government pays them for what we call conservation easements or rents the land so that we still have our ceremonial access, sacred site access, medicine access, and to be able to do that. And, and that's hard, that's hard work. And it's not gonna happen by the time we're here, sitting here next year, it's gonna take years and years and years of effort. But that's the trip we began when you elected this esteemed board here. And I'm gonna go back now and just bear with me because I, I kind of talk in circles a lot. So go back now to what, I, what I've been explaining. Circle back. The Indian Child Welfare Act passed in the 1970s. Right after that, they did the American Indian Religious Freedom Act. And that's coming up on its um, 45th anniversary. A very simple law. All it says is that the United States of America will protect American Indian religions that it's a declaration of policy to protect and support American Indian religions, Alaska Native and Native Hawaiians. Then we fast forward to ARFA. Next year, ARFA is turning 30 years old. That's going to be the birthday for that. Federally recognized tribes, members of federally recognized American Indian tribes. ARFA doesn't say indigenous. I'll say it again, ARFA doesn't say indigenous. It doesn't say Mashikas. It doesn't say rainbow tribe out in California. It doesn't say all those historical tribes, peyote tribes that are south of the border, it doesn't address them. It sure as heck doesn't say Villaganas in there or any other non-Indians. Indian Child Welfare Act. Why, why it was upheld? Seven to two. And the two guys, the same old two guys that vote against us every time. Um, I almost said Scalia, Justin, sorry. 
It's no, Thomas. And I know it's Thomas and Alito. Yeah. yeah. So the others, the others used precedent, and they didn't make this. And what it was being challenged is: is it race based? Is it race based? That was the challenge, basically. And what they upheld, once again, historical. We're not a race of people. We're a political anomaly, a political designation of people. Our relationship with the United States of America is a political relationship of sovereign government. Federally recognized Indian nations with land, with unique languages, ceremonies, customs. It's who we are. So when uh, these things start happening, we're not going to apologize for saying no. We're not going to apologize for trying to be um, accommodating. If we give one inch, they're going to take everything. And they made a mistake, uh, Trump made a mistake. He put this guy on the Supreme Court named Gorsuch. You guys all heard of him? Like a miracle, you know. And it's because Trump never wants to study. He doesn't want to, he, he just knew Gorsuch was kind of against civil rights, so he got excited, you know. And, uh, but he didn't know he was really pro-federal Indian law. And he's been educating those other guys. So the few cases we've won, he's been leading and polling pulling the other ones over. So, what I'm really simply saying is all of our documents, and we, we, you know, we do apologize to our Canadian relatives as well, because this organization is for you too, but all of our documents have been focused on we're American Indian people, we have this trust responsibility that President Brady talked about, the United States has to uphold it. And we're, we're members. As members, it's a collective group rights. That's what we're protecting for everybody. Group rights. So when, um, when we see this money being sprinkled around, and everywhere this money from this millionaire, everywhere they're sprinkling it around, there's fighting. There's divisiveness. There's acrimony. There's contention. There's jealousy. There's people that were brothers for a long time, relatives. Call each other relatives, hug each other. Now they look at each other, you know, there's distrust. They're over here saying, trust us, we, we got your back, we're gonna do what's right, but they don't tell us how or why or what or who's trying to get in that teepee. And then these pictures pop up all the time. We see non-Indians all in that teepee, those guys at the front. We see our own people over in Europe with all these other groups, psychedelic groups, and it doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right in your gut. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. That's what this document addressed. And so uh, it's one of many, but it gets to that point. So always remember that. And there's a reason they use that word indigenous. And there's nothing wrong with that word, but it's an all-everything word. It's an umbrella word. The reason they say that is those, this group that we're dealing with, all of their money comes from non-Indians. All of the staff, the paid staff, is all non-Indian. They're all non-Indian. All of them, non-Indian. They're not members of federally recognized Indian tribes. To me, when I look at that, I just, in my, in my mind, I say, well, they're being led by non-Indians, right? Yep. It's simple. You can talk a good word, say a lot of good fancy stuff and all that, but it's really simple because it doesn't pass the eyeball test. And it makes you wonder, you know, what, what, what is it all about? So we're trying to stop it that way. And we're trying to do that with these uh, documents because it's something we can't control. Our organization, we have no money. 
we had a, when he took office, how much was in there? 28. 28,000. Guess how much is in there now? 28,000. We're proud of that. We're not ashamed of it. Because if we're going to do something, we reach into our own pockets. We get down here, we go to D.C. on our own pockets. We go do some fundraisers, some Indian tacos. and Brother's always doing these real fancy garage sales in Newtown. You got to see it, you guys. You know, best Indian tacos and designer shoes for sale and everything. You know, it's awesome. So... Don't be ashamed that we got a little tiny budget. 28,000 took on millions of dollars, you guys. Give us a round of applause, you know. And Justin Jones, I always, I always say it. I said, man, I'm so proud of him. You know, the first thing we did when the new people took over, we made a motion to expand our legal team. And guess what? Our old lawyer is doing a workshop next week in Denver with the psychedelic people. Give Justin a round of applause, our, our Native American Indian lawyer. I'm glad we moved that lawyer along. Our other old lawyer, he's, he's the one running the whole show for those guys over there. So we had to make that break. And we had to do it in a good way too. And I just, man, I'm proud of him. I always like, I always hear about the cases he wins and, and I, I, in my mind, I'm like, man, that's awesome. I said them, those, uh, the black people in America, the Ginny people, they got that one good lawyer, Johnny Cochran, remember? That guy got OJ off. The Indian, we got Justin Jones. <laughs> we got him. So he's been guiding all of this too. Well, we got to have laughter, right? You got to have that. That's our medicine too. Jeez, I'll be trying to patent that next time. <laughs> so that's the team with all of you, all of you. And we're always a phone call away, but that's, that's what we're proud about. Then the next thing they did was a motion to establish a legislative committee. Well, why do that? It was to organize all of this, to make sure we had a pathway when we went to Washington, D.C. for people to meet, to do these things. And it was meant in a good way so that they would uh, organize. But the most important thing was if we said we believe this medicine, we cherish it, we all do. It's so number one in our lives. Why would we try to do all the work to protect the medicine in two days if we really respect that medicine? It's like trying to pour a pitcher of water into a little tiny cup. It's not going to fit. If we really mean it, really love it, we have to work at this every day of the year, year after year after year, the protection, what we're doing. So the legislative committee is like 7-Eleven. It's seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You can call any time. Um, but it was to honor the medicine, not try to create a spot so someone could grab a mic and lecture people or whatever. That wasn't what it was for. It was to impact, to protect, and to execute our mission by the Native American Church in North America. And then the next thing we did, we passed a conflict of interest resolution. And that was to separate. And what it was to say is that your oath of loyalty is to the Native American Church in North America and this medicine, not any other nonprofits, not some millionaire over in California. You can't have a duality of interests. And, and some of my brothers were acting confused. And I know they weren't confused. They knew what this meant. But they were acting confused. And, you know, what do you mean? What are you trying to do? And I, I finally said it simple. It means you can't run two peyote meetings at the same time in two different teepees. You're here with us. Right here. Or you're not. Go, go over there. That's all right, too. And so that conflict of interest, it didn't just affect that IPCI, it also, we said, we, we are not acknowledging the National Council of the Native American Church. And the reason why is because the process was flawed. It was ill-conceived when they did the latest iteration of that. And that was what we did two years ago. So now, 
We're, we're uh, 24 months later, and as a result of us focusing on your um, agenda, on your motions, on your resolutions, on what we're trying to do, this is some of the work. I'll go through these real quick, and then you guys can get on with the agenda, and I, I'll, I'll probably talk a little tiny bit on Saturday, right? Or no? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll have some more detail then, but... Okay, we're gonna do this sign it real print good so um, you don't miss out when we do emails and stuff. Did you want me to go over these documents? Okay. Yeah. All right, so the in your packet, I'm gonna just run through these real quick and then I'm gonna just highlight a couple. In your packet, there's some tribal leader letters and resolutions. You're gonna see the one from Rocky Boy to their congressional delegation, you're gonna see the Fort Hall one. <laughs> Rocky Boys, Chippewa Cree Tribe, Fort Hall, um, Shoshone Bannock, um, the Oglala Sioux Tribe has one too on the Farm Bill, uh, the Northern Arapaho Tribe, and the MHA Nation, that's Mandan, Hadatsa Nation. You're also going to find in your packet this, uh, it's called OMB, that's Office of Management and Budget. They have a Tribal Affairs Director there. This is the Biden administration's budget person. So. They sit down and work on, and they're working on the 2025 budget now. But you'll see President Brady's um, recommendations for President Biden's 2024 budget. And in his recommendation, he put um, $10 million for the farm bill under United States Department of Agriculture, and $10 million for peyote conservation under interior um, conservation as well. Um, that's the first time, relatives, that NACNA has ever offered testimony to any administration's Office of Management and Budget. And Liz Carr is the tribal affairs person. Yolanda Young is the director of it. But we, um, we got a real good response from her last week as well. It put it on the radar. And what, what we said was the American Indian Religious Freedom Act of 78 and 94, they're... Um, their policy declarations, but they don't have any funding behind them. So how do we create a mechanism to create a funding stream to fund the government's trust responsibility for executing the declaration contained within ARFA? And this is what his, his testimony says on that. And it's real awesome. And, and she really liked it. And, and they're not gonna give us that, not this year, um, or probably even next year or after that, but it raises the awareness and it gets us on that radar and they kind of know what's going on the other one we did was the national congress of american indians they have a resolution on federal preemption this was to ask the um, department of justice to intervene to intervene in these state initiatives and state legislative efforts in their assemblies to legalize mescaline it's asking the federal government to uphold its trust responsibility through federal preemption because it's federal Indian law and warn these states to stop putting these initiatives forward because they're not constitutional. And that one, that one is in your packet too. And then there's the tribal leader testimony on the interior appropriations. I mentioned uh, my nephew, Councilman uh, Grossback, he has a congressional testimony in there. Frank Dayish has congressional testimony. We have that in our packets too. Um, from the Peyote Way of Life Coalition. President Brady has uh, congressional testimony in that interior appropriations, and Don Davis from the Shoshone Bannock tribes, who's a botanist and a researcher on the land, the landscape down there. Those testimonies are really important to take with you because anybody can do this, um, but people don't because we're all so busy in life and we don't know what's all going on in DC all the time, but we'll let you know if you guys wanna join in next year when we, do, um, when we do those testimonies for that particular committee. And then uh, the most important um, thing I could say on that was NACNA has also testified twice now before the subcommittee on indigenous peoples in the House of Representatives and also now they changed the name when Republicans took over. So it's the indigenous, or not, it's the Indian and Insular Affairs Subcommittee in the House We've testified twice before them. We have those testimonies in there. 
And also, most recently, the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs had a round table on the farm bill. And we submitted testimony on there because we wanted to try to get into that farm bill for um, habitat protection. And then Raul Grawalva, uh, his staff, he was the chairman previously of the Indigenous Peoples Committee. He wrote a Dear Colleague letter. That's in your packet as well. And um, is that in the packet? Yeah. Okay. Be all tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Tomorrow. Everything will be. Okay. Done. Well, I'll speed it up then. For the delegates at large. Yep. For delegates, oh man, we're getting tough now. You know? <laughs> so that Grahalva letter is awesome though, because what it, what it, uh, okay, Wilson, man, Wilson Ron's the old politician. He just did like this to me, you know. It's good. That go to your watch. The hook. So, that one is a dear colleague letter, and it went out to all the leadership in the House and the Senate of the Farm Bill, and he talked about the hearing that they did in Oklahoma for the Native American church and peyote and habitat preservation. So we're, we're building these friends and I'm gonna just close there. I also have a draft. I have a draft discussion paper on American Indian Religious Freedom Act and consultation. And you're all welcome. This is not a final, it's not a document of NACNAs yet. We haven't approved it yet. It's just in draft form. But if you guys, if you old teachers, you old educators here want to take a look at it and with a red pen or something, give me some comments. I got, I got a lot of copies here. And um, we're going to fix this up. And this is going to go in our tribal leaders toolkit too to help them with this consultation process and so forth. So I'm going to close there. Last week, we met with the Chief of Staff for the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs. We met with the minority staff. We met with the OMB, Director for Tribal Affairs. We met with Native Americans in philanthropy who are working on a $100 million consultation, or not consultation, but conservation initiative. We're trying to become a part of that as well. And they're partnering with Interior on this $100 million initiative to conserve sensitive lands in America. and, and um, we met with them. We met with the White House staff, uh, Paui Rivera. We met with him. And we met with the new executive director of the, uh, National, or the Native American Council uh, for the White House. So we've been really busy. I'm going to just close there. And I uh, appreciate your guys' time. This is just a little snapshot of our work um, that we've done. And it's fun. Um, and we invite all of you. We're, we're uh, third weekend in September. Yes. On Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to Washington, D.C. again. Let's all go. You guys can get them kind of cool fancy rooms that have like a big suite and put your bedrolls out, get like 20 people in a room or something, you know. But that, that is going to be the quarterly, this quarterly, it's going to be in Washington, D.C. again. So there's about 25 of us that went over there last year. We met with all our congressional delegations and White House staff as well, and it was really awesome. And that's how we're going to push this forward, relatives. And uh, the uh, National Indian Gaming Association, that's the venue. They've already reserved it for us. They're donating it to us. And um, so they're going to, um, it isn't just us. Everybody else is kicking in too, helping, because they know this is so important. And, and they, the sense of urgency is, is within them as well. And these are people that don't understand peyote or this way of life. They just want to help Indian people, our people. So that's going to be the third weekend on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, September, the quarterly meeting in Washington, D.C. I don't want to make any promises, but we put a teepee up last year. Justin ran the meeting. It was awesome. You know, and uh, kind, of, kind of lively, too, because those helicopters are, you know, the security and ambulances and police. It was a real wild place, D.C., but... Uh, the um, them helicopters even kind of hovered over us for a bit, you know, but he just kept on praying good. And, and it was nice, you know. It was nice. Yeah, it was, it was cool. So what we're asking the White House is they do a tribal leader summit, and your president of Navajo Nation will be invited to that too. But they do a tribal leader summit every year. We're asking to put a teepee up on the White House lawn and have a meeting there. And even Cedar, Cedar their staff too, and be around there for that. So... How, how do we do all this? You know, just love. 
love for each other and this love for this way of life and, and respect. So I'll, I'll end with that. Aho, relatives. In our uh, legislative chair, and good of applause. So uh, we'll move on down here to our, um, you know, discussion, our, our panel here. So I'll turn this time over here to, um, we'll go down to uh, our uncle here. And uh, maybe um, before, uh, maybe he, uh, we'll turn his time over, maybe uh, Justin, and then we can. Um, Not a Arnold for Shikado, Shitano Senegi, Ado, Shetahasi, Toto. Yat a Nikidini Rodis, without any arm. I don't dance, Senegi, a pet, I don't dance, I don't cut this Zahni was a sheen, kids a sheen, yet a sheen, a sheen, yet a sheen, not a would add a yet nanch, Koyat a Nikidini Rodis, Arnold for. The beginning of the Native American Church of North America Annual Convention. I want to say thank you to the host chapter here, the net chapter, all the officers and the members of, of, of the chapter that are hosting this year. There are hosts, there are we are their guests. It's been a year since uh, Newtown, North Dakota. Last year, Good afternoon, members of the Native American Church of North America, members of other Native American church organizations, as well as uh, just simple, old, humble individuals that come from your individual homes that are present here. And I would also like to acknowledge all of you that are watching on YouTube, that are watching live on Facebook, Native American Church of North America. You are also watching on Facebook on the Purple Wave, you're also watching on Facebook on for the Institute for the Net Culture and Philosophy and Government Organization. So we, we wanted to bring a lot of these things to you live today, tomorrow, because we feel that there are certain things that we believe that needs to be heard out there in Indian country. Now, some of these are going to stay on on and you can watch that later or tell others that there is something on, on, on the page that you can watch later on as well. One of the things that uh, my brother here, Ryan, was talking about is this whole idea of, 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 of other non-Indian organizations or individuals or entities that are coming around that have organized, that have, have done certain initiatives, carried out certain initiatives, in either to collect the medicinal, spiritual aspect of our sacrament. It's trying to take it apart, looking for something that the bottom line being that you're going to make money off of. That is first and foremost. Let's just be honest about that. That's the bottom line. And so the whole idea of that was, has been around for quite some time. Little did we know that that was happening. Little did we know that there was such a thing as decriminalization of peyote. 
Because only because the law that was shrouding that peyote, so that it could only be used in a bona fide ceremonial way by members federally recognized tribes. That is federal law today. Has not changed yet. That, that part of it, trying to change that so that it could be open to everybody. That was what was happening. It didn't start last year. It didn't start two years ago. It didn't start four years ago. It has actually been happening for the last 25 years. There's been initiatives to do that. But now we have this other issue that is before us today. And so it is important that we understand that that is part of our defense of preserving our peyote. That is part of protecting our our to protect it and to preserve it. And so we have to understand that. Is our greatest enemy today. We are our own greatest enemy today. Through that's the reason we have to understand some of these things. And so in either to take this another level. What my brother talked about here are all of the things that are ongoing. We're at that juncture where we're making those legal gains. We're making those legislative gains. We're making progress. And it's evident in everywhere you look at. Talk to anyone at the D.C. level. Case in point, decriminalization was very much evident in state, California state legislature. It is a dead issue today because we came around and said, That's case in point. That's progress. There's a term now that we're using and that's being used. It's called dispossession. get dispossession. get dispossession. That is an Anglo term. What it is actually means when you break it down means that they're trying to take the substance the matter, the formula, the, 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 the chemical composition of peyote, azir. they're trying to take that and replicate that so that they could mass produce it. It could be mass produced so that they could sell it. Now, the scheme, I'm going to call it the scheme the scheme is the fact that we're going to use this as a therapy. That's what the scheme is. But we all know that it is not the case. So we have to look at that dispossession idea, initiatives, and concepts. We have to understand it from our end. And so that was why we assembled this panel discussion here today to talk about that. Because we all know, we all know the fact that as when we say holy medicine, as we're addressing the spirit of that medicine. There is a holy spirit in there. 
There is a Holy Spirit that comprises of that medicine. It's just not a plant. It's just not something maybe you go outside and see this tumbleweed out here. It's not that. There is a spirit in there. It's a spirit of a male. It's a spirit of a female. That's what the relationship is between it's not a worship. It's having a conversation. It's having an understanding between. That is what makes us unique as American Indians. What makes us unique as Dene, makes us unique as other tribes. <coughs> That is what makes us unique. So, when the American Indian Religious Freedom Act was created, they inserted that thought and that idea and that concept into the American Indian Religious Freedom Act, the law in itself. It's inserted in there. And so, when you try to take that spirit out of it or that substance and replicate it, you are essentially violating federal law. That's what this discussion is going to be about today. But in either to get to that Bilagana Kekobe has Anagi over here, in either to understand that, we have to go back to our Hogan level, our Tipi level, our sweat lodge level and understand that part of it, the neck echo, it's the strategic echo, that part of it, why is it like that? The question of why, we need to understand and we need to know it, so we're better equipped to advocate for the preservation and protection of Azekina. So we have two other panelists besides me today, and the first one is going to be um, um, so that's kind of I'm going to premise that and I guess we have a mix up here I'll turn it over okay um, with that being said we'll put a comma right there I did see our, our good relative here uh, Milton Miller come in the room here so I'll turn this time over to uh, Milton and then we'll turn it uh, back over to um, <clears throat> the panel. So uh, Uncle Wilson and then Avery, we'll go back to you guys. Uh, sorry about that. I know you guys might be a little tired and hungry, <coughs> but um, I just want to uh, go back to this uh, agenda here. So thank you all for uh, going along with this work session here. So turn this time over here to our past president of NACNA. And also uh, a veteran. I want to say uh, good afternoon to each and every one of you. My name is uh, Milton Miller Sr. I'm a uh, Omaha from uh, Macy, Nebraska. I come from the Thunder Clan people. And then uh, my Omaha name is Ekeitanga, meaning uh, big shoulders. That's my name. <clears throat> and then uh, me and my, my son, my niece, we made our way down here to uh, um, honor a request. And at the same time, the president and the executive officers had uh, asked me to come to speak. You know, but I didn't know I was supposed to speak today. I thought it was supposed to be Friday. You know. So I went around to visit all my, all, some of my relatives this morning. You know. Went to uh, see them, talk with them. You know. And uh, I want to apologize to each and every one of you for the way I'm dressed. You know. I uh, kind of was supposed to be on vacation, like, so I just kind of dressed like this, you know. And then uh, I'm sorry. For standing in front of you like this, you know, I apologize to you. I even put on social media, my my legs are wider than a white guy, you know. But uh, 
So uh, early this morning, I was gonna have a walk run. So I went to look for it. They said, over there by uh, Window Rock. So we went to, uh, towards Window Rock. And they said, there's a big tent up over there. Go over there. They're gonna have walk run and serve breakfast. So we went over there towards Window Rock and we seen a great big white tent. So we just pulled over and we went over there, got off the car, went in there, there was a bunch of chairs lined up, microphone speakers, and they, they welcomed us there. I was looking around, I wonder where Art Hardy's at, I wonder where John Brady's at, where's Justin Jones, and all of a sudden they give me a paper, and they give me a little guitar. Then I finally figured it out and I was at the wrong place. <laughs> it had revival on it, revival. So they wanted me to sing a song, so I sang a song for them. <laughs> I was gonna get my gourd and sing a Omaha song, but I got the little guitar, I started playing it, and I started singing, and then I said, uh, I'm dreaming of a belly kind of woman, like that. <laughs> but uh, I want to say thank you. I didn't know I was supposed to speak today. But uh, I mean, it's an interesting topic, and I want to thank Brother Ryan, you know, for expressing yourself, you know, and uh, bring it to attention. Because a lot of times our chapters and members do not get the information that's very vital that pertains to our way of life. And it's the, uh, well, it's, it's the, uh, it's the um, responsibility of the delegate at large to, um, to uh, distribute this information to the chapters and its members according to the bylaws of the Native American Church of North America. So the delegate at large has that responsibility to uh, um, distribute this information. Um, so, but I'm, I'm grateful that it's, it's, it's uh, taking place. Though there is transparency within the Native American Church of North America, then uh, it's up to the delegates to get that to the chapters, get that to uh, the members, so you read it. I remember a back time ago when I was the president, we went to, uh, I can't remember the name of the mountain cop, over by uh, Luca Chukai, ABDN was having a conference and I was invited over there and I was invited to be a speaker. And then uh, Justin Jones, he was, uh, he was the uh, mediator. And I was on one side and um, James Botsford was on the other side. They would ask us questions and the questions would go back and forth. And Justin, uh, he would uh, translate in Diné. But one of them was on, on a membership, on the membership, on membership card. And then uh, a question was asked to me at that time, you know, what would you do if there was a Billy Donna in the teepee? So I related to Justin Jones, and he said, oh, I, I, I can't say that. I can't say that. I got elderly people out here, old, old women out here. I can't say that. But this federal law that we have that protects our way of life is very vital. And today this federal law is really at risk. The non-natives will try their best to intervene what we have and we have something good. Every so many years we have problems with our medicine. We have problems with our medicine and protecting our, our way of life. Sometimes I believe that this medicine does this so that we as followers and practitioners can be, become more loyal, sincere to our way of life. 
and to pass this on to the younger generation. It gets our attention. It gets our attention. Our medicine has our attention today. And it's something that we really need to believe. How many young people know how to put up a teepee? How many young people can split wood? How many, how many young people can say a prayer so each and every one of us can hear it? But I tell you, all the young people, they're good drummers, they're good singers. So our holy way of life, this herb, gets our attention to stand up and to protect it. I say this church belongs to us, each and every one of us, from the youngest to the oldest. And we all have a say in it. Each and every one of us, we have a say in it. And I'm thankful for our leadership today. Our leadership today can collaborate and have issues and um, talk to other organizations. And they can do with a lot of subjects. Our leadership can do that. Before it wasn't that way. It wasn't that way, it was only one topic. And that topic is hurting our way of life. And it split us. As I listened to a brother talk about Sutton King, Sutton King only resigned to work with the psychedelic pharmaceutical companies. Only resigned to working with them, but still working with the others. That is soliciting monies to advocate for millionaires and billionaires to help decriminalize the medicine. Read that article again. Read it carefully. And some, somebody like me, it was kind of over my head. So I had to dissect it. Look up a word to understand what that was really saying. Read it again. She didn't fully resign. She did not fully resign. Botanists, Botanists are not good for a way of life. Because when I was a president, there was a botanist from Texas A&M who brought us medicine that was hybrid, that was mixed with another cactus. And today, that's what they want. And if they get their way, nothing's going to be from Mother Earth. And our younger generation is going to suffer. Because they're not going to get what we got and what the elders passed down to us. Today in the state of Texas, today in the state of Texas, you got a lot of Billy Ghanas there. Different nationalities practicing our way of life of the Native American church. You even have women running meetings there. We have pictures. We have pictures. We have pictures. They're all sitting there with really nice feathers, really beautiful prayer shawls, prayer blankets, really nice. Then over there in the leader pole, there's a Native American man sitting there, leading all of them. Pictures, we have evidence. And when they get done with their teepees and they go outside, then they dress up and they play their guitars and their trumpets and their violins and they make a show out of it. And this is happening in the state of Texas where the laws are very, very strict on this way of life. As a president, when I was the president, Many times, 
our people would say, oh, let's ask our lawyers, let's ask our lawyers. I would say, no, why do we got to ask our lawyers? This is our church. This is our way of life. All you have to do is speak up and make a decision. And like what was said, that lawyer, he's leading. He's leading the fight for decriminalization. Back about 10 years ago, we fought the airline, FAA, took them to court in regards to our holy instruments, relatives fly with them, airplane. The uh, TSA was opening, going through it. They took them to court, they settled. My question was, this is only for Native American people. They couldn't answer that. No, for members of Native American church. No, my question is, is this for only for Native Americans? People of a friendly recognized tribe? The answer was no, it's for Native American church. So you got non-Natives flying on airplane. And, all they, and, they, and they have membership cards. They have membership cards. That's all they have to show. But they don't have to show their, their enrollment card. They don't show up to show their, their um, enrollment number. Because they don't have one. These are some of the interests that the non-natives are having today. And it's sad, and that's that that's that's the hurting our people. That's hurting our way of life. Membership cards are a part of the American Religious Freedom Act, and the clause that covers a bona fide ceremony for pe people to participate. Membership cards are important if any of you go down the road and get stopped. And they check your car and you have feathers of prey, your membership card will protect you, showing it. Because on the back should have the clause of the American Religious Freedom Act, Public Law 103-344. It should be honored. Along with your tribal enrollment number. I was asking, uh, when, when are we going to start our uh, photo membership cards? We have to have our photo and our membership cards. And a barcode. When's this going to start? We need to have it. So a lot of times our lawyers would talk. And I'm going to tell you when I was a president, when the, I don't know how to say the name, okay? I don't know how to say the name. Is it ayahuasca? Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca? When that was taken to the state Supreme Court, I believe here in New Mexico, we were summoned to go to testify against it. We were asked to go testify against it. And we were for it. Myself and my late uncle, Emerson Jackson, were to go testify that that is not an indigenous plant of this continent. But we were advised by our lawyers not to go there. Not to do it. To go over there. And it was passed. It was passed. Now it's in with our way of life. Mixing it. Mixing it. 
and it's not a good thing because it's not a part of what the old people had set forth for us. And it's sad that's, that it's that way. It's sad that it's happening. But today I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that uh, we all could be a part of what's taking place today. Our lawyer is important. I'm thankful we have Justin Jones as our lawyer. I'm glad some of the quotes he had quoted. I remember when he first started coming around, Native American Church, North America. I remember. And he was just learning. He was just learning. And membership cards was an issue. A membership card isn't a card for give us a right to pray. A membership card is a right to identify who we are. And it gives us a document to protect us. <coughs> so I want to encourage you, each of you. And I'm thankful for what our leadership is doing today. I'm thankful for all of what they're doing. Because according to what's on YouTube and the other organizations that's getting rich, to them we're just another NAC organization. We're not. Because everything passed down to us is from our fathers and our grandfathers and our great grandfathers. We're just not a, another organization. We're following the footsteps of what was set forth. So I want to say thank you, uh, Mr. President, and uh, the uh, executive officers, the legal team. About five, six years ago, who are you working for? And there was always a pause. Uh, I'm working for you guys. <coughs> They shouldn't have to stop and pause and think about it. They're not working for us, they're working for that holy medicine to keep it safe for us. And I, I just wanna let that be known. I wanna say thank you, uh, Justin Jones, uh, for being a uh, our, our lawyer, our law team. And today I'm very happy throughout Native America we have more and more children, nephews, nieces, grandsons, granddaughters that are graduating from law school, are graduating from colleges and high school. I work as a social worker. I work as a, a workforce An <coughs> initiative opportunity act program manager. And I see that our young people are, are moving forward with education. We need more lawyers, native lawyers. So I want to thank them for being a part of the NACNA. Tomorrow I will talk again. I will have more time. You may not uh, recognize me, because be, I'll be all dressed up. I want to have some high karate on. <coughs> but uh, I want to say uh, thank you. And it's good to see some of your familiar faces. You know, good to see you again. You know, and uh, I'm glad I came back. You know, my brother here asked me to come back. I walked, walked away. Because what was taking place with our way of life? and the leadership that was leading it, and it wasn't good. But I'm thankful today how things are. Really grateful, really grateful. So 
We're going around here, and I'm going to be excused, okay? Yeah. We're going around to, um, we're doing, being food critics, so we're going around and checking out all the cafes. We went to Blake's, a lot of burger last night. Knocked my <coughs> snot loose with that green chili. But uh, sure, sure enjoy it. So thank you very much. I hope. I'll remove the comma and go back to what I was saying. But nevertheless, hey, Brother Milton Miller, good to hear you again. You were saying that you, I was a mediator over at that place over there, and you were on one side, and then James Boxford, was, the attorney, was on the other side. A mediator usually is a person that facilitates two opposing parties, so I, I'm trying to remember what you guys were arguing about, what you're fighting about. Maybe the correct term is facilitator. <laughs> or moderator, but good to see you, brother. Let me add some more before uh, my grandfather, Shiche Wilson, comes up. One of the things that I think that we really need to concentrate on in terms of addressing these issues, especially to those congressional leaders, House of Representatives, Senators, Governors, other lawyers, whoever. We have to explain why we fail at that all the time. We're so prone to saying, this isn't the way, this is wrong, this is how it is. We fail to say, why? Why is it wrong? Why isn't it not right? So that's the whole purpose of this panel discussion today, is to answer, give you some answers of why. And so, Diba has ani no koko shavat ago. A, a there's the American Indian Religious Freedom Act, Public Law ninety five three four one. A that federal law no ago. It was a joint resolution. And in that joint resolution, through that, it states that the. It shall be the policy of the United States to protect and preserve for American Indians their inherent right of freedom to believe, express, and exercise the traditional religions of the American Indian. Inherent right, jeno epis, what is chiniki olia, nasid yesiki olia, bis eno sesiki olia. Inherent. Edo khed ayi lada. Do et nebela ashla et ayi lada. Et yin ayi la. Jehot ayi nid la. And then that, and then the United States Supreme Court has acknowledged that before. Ah, and no, you have an inherent right. Bish o no seish, bish o chish. To exercise your religion, Hashit A Oslehegi, A T A Hut Abin, Hahaz Ado, Do Do Tan Hit it O Nesta, Juno, Pegasad, Kaysenen. Furthermore, in the joint policy means the House of Representatives of the United States Senate, A Ita, through this federal law, brought out this issue. And what they said was that. We didn't sign it. Okay. Whereas the traditional American Indian religions as an integral part of Indian life are indispensable and irreplaceable. Our medicines, it just didn't say peyote. It's talking about our sun dances, our sweat lodges, our Native American church peyote ceremonies. They are irreplaceable. And 
That's what it says. We're the only ones that have that. Now here's the really important part, and this is a good prologue to my Che's presentation here today. Whereas the religious practices of the American Indian, as well as the native Alaskan and Hawaiian, are an integral part of their culture, tradition, and heritage, such practices forming the basis of Indian identity and value systems. Think about it. Our ceremonies, our medicines and everything, they form the basis, the basis of our Indian identity and value system. Wow. This medicine, this ceremony is who we are. It defines who we are. There's no other, other things out there that are necessarily like that. That's what makes it unique. So thereby, Shichi, Dr. Wilson Aronis, his topic today is peyote establishes our identity, our language, our culture, our way of life. That's his topic today. and look up the word hello. No. Yat ehe means you look so brilliant, fantastic, intelligent, and good, beautiful looking. That's what yat ehe means, according to my grandma. So address you like that. Oh. I want to thank um, the executive here first. Um, John Brady's dad was my good Native American church brother. I met him in 1957, Brian Brady. He used to always go where they live, so he's like my nephew. Then I used to know my daughter, Rebecca's dad. He was a good man, too. He used to go to Oklahoma and pray with them. I am glad that they're here, glad to see them. Anyway, I address all my um, executive officers, board, everybody. Thank you. I went out to the typical for the days in Russia, well known as Tony in Mexico. But through my marriage, a wheat field, and my wife, I didn't know that. I cut eye in each other, but I was just thinking all this. And then also, thank you for asking me to do a little presentation here today, 74 years. Convention annual, Native country of North America. I hope good. Otherwise, I don't say, hey, let me talk. 
I'm not like that. I'm going to listen from back there somewhere. They had to hear she don't need a call. I don't need a call. I should continue. Okay, number one. Where the peyote ceremonial belief begin? And how does it identify us as native people? How does it correspond with our clan system, our bloodline, our language, and the, our behavior, our attitude, our personality, our character, everything that makes us unique? How does it connect with that? That's going to be a question. Number one. It was a woman that found the sacred divine holy medicine, Pioli, a son of a a native woman. And it must have happened in a different generation, not in our generation. But this woman, I guess uh, there was a lot of conflict in, in, in her people's life. There was disagreement. The natural law was abused. And you should think I go be has on the cow or cheese of the cow to crack. And you're holding in the a sort of bowels and the a hot that you told me the margin. So the natural government laws were abused and and even the prayers and songs and educational system were all corrupted. And they began to fight. They developed a bad attitude, bad behavior, and personnel. Not a chodo, 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 a chodo. And so anyway, they were fighting. I guess uh, this lady, native woman, she lost her family. And she had a mother and a father, and Three sisters and no, three brothers and two sisters. Oh no, she, she got lost and she was going and she got hungry and thirsty. Pretty sure it went weeks and what, maybe a month, I don't know. But she began to get real hungry and thirsty. All kinds of sores and disease went into her body on her. And her physical existence, but she's barely gone. She was about to die. She was going to die. But somehow there was a tree, there was a root like this, and she stumbled over like this and landed real flat on her face. And on her left, on her right hand, she touched something like this. It was warm and moisture. And she knew it. And it was really soon, and Koleshi Pihati's what? It went to her physical system. And then something spoke to her and said, get up and sit up. And she did that. And they said, go ahead and take me to your mouth, you know, and swallow me. And she done that. When she did that, in that nick of time, all that thirst and hunger, disease and sores that was inside her body and on her body, it went. She got healed. Okay. That's how we are connected with this beauty. Real close. And then, and then uh, after that, the spirit, the peyote spirit told her, get up, follow me. And she followed <coughs> and medicine. It went a little ways, and then here, there was like a channel, cut the hohaun and then she went up and followed. We went into another, kind of like another world, another time. And she seen that place real beautiful. My gosh, something that she'd never seen in her life. So peony way of life, you can see that beautiful mind, beautiful nature creation. So that's how we are connected with that beautiful creation, all creation, through that medicine we connected. That's what she found. And then when she went up there, she was standing like this, and that spirit said, look to the east. She saw a beautiful dwelling. It was all white. And then she went, so they told her to look to the south. And she seen a real beautiful dwelling. It was uh, turquoise blue. Then she looked to the west. That dwelling was like gold yellow. 
Then when she looked to the door, it was real pure black. Something she'd never seen. I guess it was a dwelling, like a teepee, a home. And that spirit said, they're waiting for you over here in the east side, that white one. So she walked over there. <clears throat> then when she walked over there, <clears throat> she got close and I don't know what you would call it, Dada Nupas. The closer cancellation just to make communication to all of you. And I guess you could say, she opened that door, but they told her, open that door with your right hand. Well, right there, you should never allow somebody open that TV door for you. You opened it yourself. And so right there, when she did that, she opened that door. And then she stepped inside that dwelling with her right foot. Then when she went like that, she said, right there, hey, lady, woman, you misconnect with what they call I translated that. Or you find that hope. You'll never give up. Then she walked in. Then when she was walking on the south side of that dwelling, they told her to stop there and hold out your hand. And she done that. And then a, a real something a real good something good came and uh, it, it landed in her hand. And here was an eagle plume, a feather. And so she now nah, look at that. And they told her, you misconnected with your face, but that's your natural face. Look at it. So that eagle feather, eagle plume, that's the interpretation of our faith, unconditional faith, not man-made, naturally made. So that's where we connect with the natural hope and faith. Not, not somebody made it, no. It's natural. Ah, Nittigin, Bihiki. And right there, she found that. Then she walked to the um, west side, like, like where you have an altar here. Uh, like here's the medicine. She stood there, and then that spirit talked to her from here, said, like, call Yemi Nishin in. Like, is it you? And she was identified by her clan identity, her Indian name. So we're connected with this piality through our clan, our bloodline, and our Indian name. That's important. Not white man name, Edota. But she's Tunisian. And she said, Yes, that's me. Okay? You asked me for. One blessing, I don't know, she can. Now, if it was you and me, if the peony spirit and creator said that to you, what would you say? You know what I would say? I want a brand new quarter horse and saddle, a brand new pickup. Maybe. But she was intelligent, she said. If this is thy will, give me a blessing so that I could be mentally, emotionally, and then intellectually, holistically, spiritually, physically fit to live my life. And they said, you got it. So for this purity, Native American church, we're connected with that concept. It can't be separated. Nobody can take it away from us. That's how we are real close connected. And they said, you said something good. Ask me one more. And she said, if this done well, Ray Spirit, Holy Medicine, give me just a little teachy witchy little bit of your knowledge and wisdom so I can apply it to walk in peace and harmony. She said, that, you got that. That's where she found the unconditional love, the spirit of love, your name. Then she walked to the north side when she was by here. Then that spirit said, wait, hey, young lady, woman, wait. There's something that isn't right with you. There's something that what is wrong with you? And she said, yes, I'm mean. I'm selfish. 
of that jealous heart. I'm ignorant. I'm prejudiced. I like to criticize people. I like to cuss out people. I'm kind of evil-minded. I have a real bad attitude and personality, she said. Well, what you can do about it, I'll give it to you. You take care of it. So she put all that aside. That's where she found N, which is charity, kindness, stability, courage to live in peace. That's the woman found it. Then she walked out from that dwelling. She took about 12 steps. When she turned around, well, that dwelling, those men, they were gone. Right there. And that's why she found that peyote. She talked to it, not pray to it, okay? She didn't pray to it. She talked like, Grandpa, Grandma, Mom, Dad, I'm going to pick you up and take you to my people. You must guide me and lead me. That's how we are closely spiritually connected with it. We talk to it like, like a mother, like a dad, like a grandpa, like a gra uh, grandma. A contention, eh, that's what we call eh, kinship. We're close. Then uh, she picked it up and brought it back down to her people. When she brought it back down to her people, I'm um, cut my story short here. I don't want to talk here all day. And um, she introduced it to her people. And then uh, that spirit of medicine told her, your twin brothers, their life is gone because of this battle and war. But they're not gone. Through me, you can visit your brothers. You can see that happened. So through that peyote, now understand, if you lose someone, they're right there with you. They're not somewhere in heaven or somewhere. They're right there with you. Oh, so that's how it gives you courage. So that's how we connect it. And so through that medicine, they make church. Their salvation. We're not going to hell. We're going to salvation. I don't know you don't know about that, I don't like it either. That's what she found. A woman found that. Anyway, okay. Uh, this is how she introduced it to her people. And she said, hope. The concept of that divine hope is connected with your feeling, with your thought, with your thinking, and your spiritual holistic attitude. Always remember that. Don't deny it. That's what she was told. So in this life, we are connected with this peyote, with our feeling, thought, thinking, and our spiritual, holistic attitude. So we can't be separated. Although that she was told, your faith is connected with your spiritual and social behavior. And, and then... Also, your interests, your vision, your mission, your values, your belief, your knowledge, to live in peace and harmony. It corresponds with your traditional education, your language. That's what the peyote said. So that's how come we're close to it. We're connected to this peyote with our spiritual, social behavior, and then our interest, our vision, mission, our values, our belief, our, our knowledge, how to live really beautifully. A The third one, love, that the woman found, that she was told. Love is connected with your native personality. How beautiful and unique, intelligent you look. So don't ever say, I'm kind of stupid looking, crazy looking, I'm no good looking. You're evil minded if you say that. You have a good spiritual personality, social personality, common personality, physical personality. Don't ever forget that you're very unique. You have clanship, you have your blood flow, you have your language that considered it ties into me. That's what that peyote said. And then so there, then she went on 
And then here she came up on, they say like a faith, and then charity. When she came up on charity, he said, uh, put away all your bad habits. Don't be stingy. Don't be selfish. Don't be jealous. Don't be ignorant. Don't be prejudiced. Don't talk about somebody <coughs> behind the back. If you can use me, put it all away. To be kind. Be gentle, be hostile, you'll have something to realize uh, uh, to help somebody. And, and that's okay, she said, and when that happened. Well, that's where the natural um, personality of commitment and how to sacrifice her deed and her love and her prayer for this holy medicine. So I'm going to follow you. You are going to be for my native people. Like that. That's a okay, right there. She said, you're going to be for my native people. She didn't say other nationality. Native people. That's how we're connected. And that's the way it is. That's the way the natural law is. And I, had, I, I thought I was going to talk maybe a moment. I had it all <coughs> written out there. But that's how we are connected with this holy medicine. And so in that sense, you cannot take the purity part and take out the sacredness of it. Keep it together. Don't play with it. And then they say that don't invite non-Indians or other nationality to your ceremony. Don't ever do that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Anyway, I was thinking about my son here, and then my brother here. We were treated real dirty. We had to fight with the police. We went to jail one time, we took a steamboat in Arizona. Oh, that's love, that's your father, man. I guess that's what I'm interested in going to never come to North America to get help. And sure enough, we got help. And today we can use this pure and good, good. And, 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 you know, the way we want to. Billy Nash, keep me here, Billy Nash. Salaam, I'm going to die here. I say, I said, please, but you got out some. What the hell is it? No, I'm not going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I could have done it then, Dasha. I could have done it. I could have done it. I could have done it. We stint you with this purity. We don't want nobody to abuse it. I could have done it. It's connected to. Our attitude, behavior, personality, our characteristic, our clan, especially our language. It identifies the way we dress, who we are, the unique people that we are, how intelligent we are. The medicine knows it. Name that kind of church. No, it knows it. Hey, what are you? How do you Aho. I had a grandpa, I never said it, but. Good. Belagama, eh? Had the whole white people, they clap. We don't do that. That's what I believe. Because when somebody talks good, when you clap, you clap away the spirit of that tongue. So just say, aho. <laughs> and we we'll just need to dive in there. No, I tell you, we're more, we're looking, we're more educated. What's it called? Go ahead and clap. Oh, oh. Hey, good 30 minutes.
maybe even less. He has answered the question that I threw out there earlier. Directly taking from the joint resolution of Public Law 95-341. The language in there, once again, says, whereas the religious practices of the American Indian are an integral part of their culture, tradition, heritage, <coughs> such practices forming the basis of Indian identity and value systems. That makes us who we are like no other group of people. I didn't say race. No other group of people. And somebody knew that, realized that way back over there when this law was passed. Enough to put that in there. So it seems like we forgot about it. We kind of just left it over here. But today, this serves as the heart and soul of our argument today. What Ryan talked about, what my brother Poncho over here, the Native American Church of North America, the executive officers here, and then the delegates that are there. This is the heart and soul of our argument today. What is it really saying? And ironically, today, the United States Supreme Court passed the Indian Child Welfare Act, ICWA, 7 to 2 ruling. I remember when this was going over to the Supreme Court for an oral argument. It was the Native American Church of North America website. Remember that? A message came up and said, all y'all, on all four directions, take out your cedar. Roll a smoke. Let's pray for this. Because it deals with us. This is our argument. What is it talking about? It's talking about sovereignty. The basis of today's ruling is sovereignty. Our legal ability, our governmental ability, our cultural ability to say what is for us. This is who we are. We can say yes, we can say no. We have that ability to say that. We have the ability to say we have the right, the inherent right, to make sure that our Indian child stays with an Indian family. We have every right to preserve and protect our native blood flow. We have every right to preserve and protect our prayer. How we're going to pray if we decide to go hike up on a mountain and lay down some yed, we have the right to do that. Nobody can tell us no. If we want to put up a teepee and have a native can tell us no. We have the right to do that. You cannot tell us no. That's what this is all about. Sovereignty. 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 Yeah. I feel like I'm back to last summer. <laughs> This is what we're talking about. So, aze hina, aze banat achi kehnishitigina, aze noho kanan se aze hina. That's only one part of this whole scheme of arguments we're having here. Arguments meaning, ba sa honit no o o. Basan hira o o. Ado banat in the Hashle at Sano Nate Lagobana, right? Dota. The Nitty Bahoshi, yeah? 
Nihe sodazen, nihe za, nihe on, nihe kho, nihe tho. Nihe yo, nihe peek, e ha chitle kwe peek, ette neet, ze niki at eh. John hit ook neet, neet ye. Peek he de neel el, pe e seet ye, pe kwe le ya, nihe tse na as, e pe nihe yo on no. Di? Ben, he catch it, die, a ze, eat, ah, an hosen, eben, in, ah. But why we not eat? Juti, that is the essence of this whole movement that is here today. And it's important to understand it like that. And so, that goes to the next presenter, my son here, Avery Denny. To begin to the 74th annual Native American Church of North America convention. He opened the convention this afternoon with Yaya Nizen Bihi. He didn't sing a peyote song. He sang a traditional song because that's what peyote is also about. That's what it's about. It's a ceremony, it's a medicine within the realm and the context of many ceremonies and medicines that we still have today. So he opened that today with that and kind of set us on a course this afternoon. And so today, there's a reason why, again, back to the answer that we were seeking, why? 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 We have to have that answer because we're consistently asked by the non indian by the non-natives, why? So we have to educate. That's our role, that's your role. You have to educate. And so there's a reason why ceremonies and medicines, you don't take them apart. You can't have one without the other. You cannot have one without the other. You can't just have a ceremony without a medicine of some sort. You can't just have a medicine without a ceremony. One time I was talking about this and I was asked, what if you're just sitting at home and you take out some peyote and you eat it? You're not in the ceremony. Yes, you are. You probably took out your peyote, poured a little bit on your head, and you took it. You weren't jumping around. You weren't running a 10-mile race, and you were eating medicine. No, you sat down. Nintashi, you took it out, you took it, and you thought about something. Whatever the reason, you're taking your medicine. And after that, you went like this. That's a ceremony. It's a, you just did a ceremony. So, you can't do that. And that's what is happening today. They're trying to separate it. And our defense here is that we have to educate them to say, you can't have one without. That makes it within the context of the federal law. <laughs> are an integral part of their culture, tradition, heritage, such practices forming the base of their Indian identity and value system. That's what we're talking about. So, turn it over to my son, Avery, and he's going to talk about that concept here today. Oh. Good afternoon again, to each and every one of you that's um, coming after I did my introduction earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. Che ya, kotu kozet na ishte kotsoni basushin 
I was born in, in an area way up there in the Black Mesa called Whippewell, Arizona. And where I came from, uh, born in within a Hokan, I was born and raised with these traditional ceremonies. Navajo ceremony. My father and my mother were practitioners. They were known to be as a hatchi, and I was born into that home, that lifestyle, that way. I call go a ya a citizen sin na hagadi eko yisushi yaho a. So even though she's bahozin, I know, and I've learned how to do ceremonies in the traditional way of Kogo. So I did not take this peyote medicine until about 1973 or 72, around that time. My upbringing was mostly with the traditional way of life, I come before you and um, as a practitioner, as a khati so I can talk about it and I can brag about it, but I'm going to say that uh, a lot of you already know that I do blessing way, protection way, uh, five night, nine night ceremony, traditional. It takes a huge effort to do that. So in that type of a setting and place, I understand what it takes to have a ceremony, to be a sponsor, and to have a ceremony done like that. Just to have a ceremony. And usually there is a, an individual, usually there's a person that says, I, I don't feel good somehow, in maybe my mind, my body, physical, and um, then you have to have a diagnosis to find out what that symptom, what the cause of that symptom is. So, since it's in the Nidos and Tatiho, and no Hishi, Ado, a first thing, a big and a ticket, a Adon, the end, that's where it starts. You have to have a diagnosis for the individual to diagnose that symptom, and then from there, a referral is made. And then almost like to say a prescription is made to go forward to have a certain type of ceremony. And starting with maybe protection away, the blessing away. So then you have the five nights and the nights not die nine night ceremony. So that's where that type of a treatment set up like that is that's where I come from. So that's what I am. Uh, this one right here, the Nehatrahi Association president. So uh, yeah, I'm their leader. So, so then I control them and I tell them how to be and all of those things like that. So I have a lot of power. I have a lot of power, even more power than the Navajo Nation president because I am the uh, ahead of all the Hatrahis that are there that has medicine bundle and prayers and songs and maybe thousands and thousands and thousands of songs and they are out there and they practice them so so i am their leader and i represent them so they know i'm here speaking on on their behalf so that's what it is so so and then so if boo nigan is going to talk to me i can't go to his office he has to go to my home and sit over here and talk to me like that so. He even has to pay me to talk to me like that, so and, and get some answers from me. So that's what the, that's what kind of a hatafi. That's what they represent. So they are the ones that um, face all these wars and invasions and all of that. So we deal with a lot of historical historical trauma that is still after here after 150 years. 
and these are mental disorder, condition, um, drug use, alcohol abuse, and you name it. It, it, it. it came from that time, and we still face it into the next generation, and we are treating that in the Native American church using peyote, and then also in the traditional ceremonial way like that. So, um, talk about that. So, we as Navajo, uh, we identify as being Dene, and we are on the lands of our ancestors, all of us, it's all of them. So, the divine nature is a relative to us, just like what um, my, my brother Wilson said. He said, we don't pray to this divine um, plant, we count to it as a relative. We say, Shema Azeh, like that, because even the Hassan becomes a relative. But we have to say it in the native language, using the Navajo. So you say, Shema, I don't know, in that word, Shema, the Hassan, it, it touches the, the heart and the minds of this divine nature. So we live in a, a state of a home, a covenant, a, a holy sacred place, and that's what we have to, we as Hakati have to defend it, and all of you too. So we have to use our Navajo traditional ceremony, sacred songs and prayer. But we have to, we have to protect that using maybe like the traditional law, ceremonial laws that has I that's where we come from. It's really something to say that we are a Navajo nation. This is where we were placed to live here as Navajo, as the Neh. It's a sacred holy place. There's a divine nature holy here. In order for us to do that, we were instructed to to use the elements to explain our essence and our existence, where we come from. We come from these four holy beings. They have to have that. They're not, they're inseparable. The fire, water, air, and pollen. Even that word, the yin, is just a word that's used. But when you add it to the fire, they grow wild in their natural habitat. They find their places. They have to have all of these. So it's, un, it's inseparable. Just like our life, we have all these four in our body. We have to use that to treat ourselves. It's in our ceremony. The fire has to be there, the water has to be there, the air has to be there, and a medicine, a pollen has to be there for us to use it. Then the ceremony can be done like that, at a place, at a home, because it is genuine, the way that we got it, the way we have it, our ceremony. It cannot be 
be replicated. It has to be done in a original way. Just recently I discovered and just recently I I seen and I kind of like heard and I listened and and I realized that this this ceremony, this ceremony, they're, they're out in the public. Just like, for example, if you had a Hatan, people will come over and have it at somebody's home. And then, it's the five night ceremony, the nine night ceremony, where kind of like you put it out there and a lot of people participate in it. People come from all around. So, and you take it out and you use it for treatment in there, but a lot of people attend it. Maybe over like, uh, maybe 400 people can go over there and, and have a ceremony and participate in that. And what I find out that this peyote ceremony, if you were to put all of these ceremonies in a container, in a box or bag, and you take every one of them out, like this. But way over there, right, and way in the bottom, just a little piece like this, this Native American church ceremony would be way up there. there, as this bitch is not, and you put it outside and maybe the way we do it, put up teepee and it's used as very close only at your home. I get home what you take in the house. Individual need for the family, for the home. So it's so sacred, it's so divine, where this peyote ceremony can be only put up at your home. Very just immediate family will attend and pray like that. And be put down and be put away again. So put way back into the here goes. So I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if Certain ones that you can do it like this, that, like this. But this particular one, I don't know what it is. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it. And there's always stories. Um, the story of the emergence, the story of, let's say, like the underworld. Maybe the yellow world was destroyed, destroyed by, by water. There was a big flood. That story is a ceremonial story. Ceremonial survival story. That's what it is. It's not just a story like a fairy tale. It's not a story just like for, for just to, to tell it. It's a, a history. It's a story of a prayer. It's a story of people trying to survive. It's a story about plants that guided the people. Just read. They are the ones that give the intelligence to the, the survivors to go a certain way, to go a certain way to survive, where there's salvation to emerge into the next world. And there are stories about, you know, breaking laws and rules. Why? 
this world was destroyed. So the stories that people in that world, they sort of like they played with this law. They messed it up and they broke the laws and flood came to them. So and everything went under underground until it was the plants that found the land. It was the plant that sacrificed their prayers and their phone to make this land that was under the water to emerge, to become a land out of the sea, to make it a the next world. So these plants were able to talk without nobody telling them their own lives they took it upon themselves to find to settle down on the ground when the water went down it was still muddy it was still clay but they found their way and they found a place to grow and then they found a place to grow and people began to walk on so ad and the a they had to sit down. These plants were able to talk. They made themselves to be medicinal plant. They made themselves to be used in a certain way as they put themselves here like that. They divided themselves into, I'm going to only share five categories, five, they divided themselves, these plant people, they, they, they were the first one here and then they divided themselves. The first group, they said that we will take care of the land here, we will protect, protect the air, the water, everything, and then to protect the soil erosion from wind, water, and what will keep the land firm and steady. That will be our, our reason for being here. Ah, then the air to provide shelter for other species. That's the first category. The second category, the second group, provide all beans what to eat. Or other species, like um, let's say most familiar, most common would be horses and sheep and animals of all sorts. They would feed on the leaves, the roots, and all these plants. A, that would be the second category. They all have names, and you see it grow out there. There's more plants that are growing. Because of the winter snow and rain that we got early, so a lot of these plants are this high now. If you go out there, if all these years you saw these plants only grown this much and you identify this plant that was only this much now, but they're grown this tall and you cannot identify them. So you have to kind of like know where they are, know where they grow, and what they are, and you have to find them. That group they said, okay, to be utilized in these ceremonies. I called it the ancient ceremonies because some of these ceremonies were, were carried from the first world, the second world, the third world, and then into this world, the fourth world. So a lot of these ceremonies survived and we still have them today to utilize. In this ceremony, you have to have a herbal medicine. And you can say like 10 of these ceremonies to utilize. They have different herbs to use, different plants to use 
So prayers are gathered to use in the traditional ceremony. They can be taken and be boiled in the ceremony and taken like that, drink and consume for treatment. Chanters have the knowledge as herbalists to collect mixed herbs, kind of like they, they can be chemists and they can mix these medicine just perfectly for the patient to drink and be treated and something is going to be healed in their system. So cancer can be treated at the early stage. Anything that is in the body can be treated by a Navajo traditional ceremony and the Yodi ceremony too also. So some of the herbal plants are used to tie, to tie bundles in the ceremony. They are tied in Nehota. Without these plants, without these herbs, you cannot do a ceremony. You got to have a ceremony. As soon as the practitioner goes over there, they have to have these uh, medicinal plant and then the herbal drink that's going to be administered through the ceremony. So it's kind of interesting that um, uh, we we're talking about ceremony, cannot be separate, medicine, prayers, and all of that. It's very true, you, you cannot do that. In order to have a ceremony and, a, and well, because it's genuine, you can't replicate it, and then it's reliable. It's real, you can use it, you can, it can help you. And then, and then it's valid. Me, I'm one of them, I can say that. After I, I had the traditional ceremony, after I had the peyote ceremony, after I had a prayer done for me, after I had this um, support group as relatives, they came to help me as a whole family. And through that, I, 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 I heal. I, it made me feel better. So then I can take that medicine. I can take that bundle. I can take that jish ben I can put it into a in my home somewhere where I can put it right there, make a place for it. I can know you got to take it to your home and with your family. Your family, your children know that this is a medicine one. Your family, your children that knows that this is the ceremonial. Your family, your children, within the immediate family, in the whole gun, they know that there's this place for that medicine and how it's utilized and that's how the fourth one category this one warning about these plants are shared because these are poison plants and when you eat this it can kill you but it's a medicinal plant even though it's poison and we have to be very very careful not to share that with anybody, like our children. Because as soon as you say that this is dangerous, if you eat it, it's going to hurt you. For sure, they're going to go over there and they're going to try it. Certain plants are not used only when it's <coughs> going over there to make an offering, to pray over there, to use the language and to pray over there. So, so if somebody took it uh, but deliberately or by accident, somebody ate the medicine, that poison the medicine, there is an antidote that could be used, another plant that could be used, collected for that purpose for 
to uh, be a minister to 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 kind of like take that power to make that power to be neutralized so that that really kind of like what the pain or what type of uh, side effects that person has then it will be neutralized it, would, uh, it has to take another plant to do that it, uh, yeah, it, but we have to learn to be educated learn to have these songs and these prayers they're out there a lot of these side effects can be coughing, rash, sores and put the on the body put the, you can start to feel scar or something like that and sometimes these plants they have unleashed their power and then it gets onto you you have allergies all medicine plants they have a a protector spiritually they have a protector and when they sat down when they talk at the time of the emergence they, that's what they also uh, conclude is this is going to be my protector this is going to be my shield so you can't just go <coughs> over there and just get it too either that's the reason why when you go travel down to where this plant grows down in Texas, you have to roll a smoke, you have to take your pollen, whatever you want to put down to make an offering. There is a passage, you have to go through this first one, then the the second one, so there's an you go through all of these and make your way over there. There's prayer stops that are made all the way to where it grows. Uh, and, uh, you talk to it and then you take it. The one that you pray to, you don't bother, but you cut the other one and then you take it, take it home. The, the plant that you collected are not, your, their lives are not taken. They're still alive. They're still fresh, they're still alive, their spirits, their power, and their um, healing power are still in these plants, and then we put it away. And then when we put it into our ceremony and burn cedar, and then go like that, that's when the power and the energy and the healing power come back to that plant, and that's when we consume. But it has to take that prayer, it has to take that song prayer and us too and to treat ourselves with it. So it's kind of interesting like that. Um, traditional healing ceremony. In that there's a mention of all these other plants, including Azeh. We have it. It's mentioned in our story. This plant did not come from anywhere. It did not fall out of the sky one day to be collected. That plant is already in our story. It has a, a spiritual Navajo <coughs> name to talk to it in a way like that. And a lot of times we have to learn, teach one another. We have to know this by heart because it's important because we are the people that came from the the emergent story and we're still here we are the ones that were here when the federal government came around to sign a agreement a contract so but as a nation uh, indigenous indian we still have a nation we don't fall under the government of the constitution of the government, the 50 states, we are exempt from that and we have our own our own sovereignty. On here, We have have our own language, our own ceremony, our own medicine, our own education. So and that's what makes us strong. We can say this is our 
land. This is our water. This is our plant dew. They were already here. This is our relatives. We live with them from the time of immemorial. And we're here. You people, you came from overseas. You came on a, a boat and you came here. What you brought across, maybe one gallon of water was missing. Uh, I say that one container was still in there and when you drank it all, you ran out of your water. So the food that you brought over here, eh, 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 was gone. So from there, eh, 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 we had to feed you and we had to nurse you. We had to doctor you. We had to give you our medicine so that you could survive. It was, uh, it, that was our our contribution for you to survive. We help you. So what Navajo traditional ceremonies, these ceremonies that we have are not scary. They're not spooky. They are there for treatment. They are there for healing purposes. So what our eight and then go so being a the president of the Tali Association I can really actually say that our ceremony is in danger. We are losing our traditional ceremony. So over there where I come from we had like twenty ceremonies, different ones. Now we have only two left, and the two <coughs> elders to do that. Nobody is learning that. Yes, getting a master degree, getting a doctor degree is important, yes, to make money, to be stable. But how about over here, our ceremony? We're losing it. And so, so I'm ready to teach somebody about this way. I'm ready to have a student that I can teach. But, but it doesn't happen like that. But you can actually say today that I am the only one that is fully knowledgeable with the traditional ceremony. I should say, yes, see, I'm the, the only survivor of all these ancient ceremonies. The one what I know in here is is what's left with me. What oh, what is that called? So, so being a nightway singer and being a <coughs> practitioner like that, I think I, I am have a lot of knowledge that I have to share. So it could and they call. So they, that there's nothing wrong with that medicine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's alive and it grows in its own domain. Very comfortable place that grow. But when we intrude, when we invade their territory, their boundaries, when we go step into them, they can go back and they can move and they can go other place. They hide from you. They're very sensitive like that. So what are bonds in English in Hashi just oh they can just vanish and then go someplace else where you can't find them no more. They survive like that and but how long they have energy, power oh no. If you use it the wrong way, it's gonna hurt you in here somewhere. And it oh so even not so that medicine there's nothing wrong with it but a human being came around and saw it and picked it up and healed from it. That same human being, somewhere in the generation, they misuse it. And that's what's wrong today. So, and I surely believe that this marijuana, uh, recreational marijuana, the way it's used, down the road over there, it's going to hurt a lot of people. And there's going to be no, no cure for that. Even though it sounds good, maybe you can trip out and have a real good experience with that today. But down the road, you will have a bad experience because 
it's misused and it's not used the way it was prescribed at one time. So now, people that do that is going to have a lot of problems in their life. It could end the day as well. These are the last picture right here. Oh, oh, look at this picture. This Let's imagine that we are trying to save our lives, our families, our children. And they're going off the cliff and we have to retain them. We have to go reach out and save them. And these are knowledge. These are ceremonies. They're, they're going to be at stake. Even in Nangwa, we have to save our medicine. We have to save our prayers and our song. We're not, to, we're not to, to supposed to sell, to sell for profit our ceremony. So, I'll, I'll, I'll share you a story in the net, 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 the the net, the the net, the net, the net, the net, the net, the 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 あ、じゃあ、お、お、だはしけだはじ。お。ひはしえ、けおげげしよやっけ。よびけおほんね、ずれでいいんご。あじ、あ、え、よびざほてげのな、らしい。ちょんて、え、ワンデイ、朝あち
and he erased that drawing of him. So somebody put it on there. It took a year to the age. He came back and he would have that power again. So what are no in his whole Jishkot? And those are stories from ancient times. What and they call and they warn us don't just eat that. Don't do this. But we never listen. And that's how we learn. We get in trouble. And then so. So from this Tati Association and Azebin Hagara, North America, Native American Church of North America. My uncle here and she's not Ashke. I didn't know. Thank you for coming this way. And we're able to sit here and talk about our belief, our medicine, how to preserve it and how to protect it. So, yes, we are in a crisis. Yes, we have an urgent need, an urgency. So, and somebody manipulated our mind. Somebody told us something about this period of how to make money and we are drawn to it because money is one that has that magnet and then it has that stain it's a it's a real big thing so we are here to save our medicine we are here to to rescue our medicine and so that it can grow in a natural habitat in this order. Thank you. Oh! oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure, we um, Just a few thoughts to leave with you, put on the table, to invigorate your thinking, to invigorate your feelings. Part of learning, part of educating the public educating others, especially the congressional leaders and whoever that we have to deal with is to explain it like this. But we have to learn it at home, we have to learn it ourselves so that we can explain it. And so times that sometimes it, the, we have to have these discussions, it may not be comfortable all the time either. We have to do it though. And then I always put a challenge on the table as well. Anybody can learn how to drum. Anybody can learn how to take care of fire. Anybody can learn how to bring in water. Anybody can learn how to burn cedar. Anybody can do that. Anybody can learn how to run a meeting. Anybody can do that. Because there's a lot today like that. But here's the challenge, especially to our children and our grandchildren. Please explain, my son and my daughter, my grandson and my granddaughter, please explain why this peyote is sacred. Describe it to me. Please explain why that drum you're hitting is sacred. Why is that gourd sacred? Why is that fire sacred? Explain it to me. Don't just say it's sacred. Explain it to me why. I think that's the challenge that us parents and grandparents and leaders that we have, not only peyote ceremony, but all ceremonies. You see, that's what the goal is. So that more of our children can explain that and say, this is who I am, this is what I'm about, this is my identity. From Facebook, YouTube, thank you for your attention today, and hopefully that we did invigorate some thinking in you. Ishiban, so case, but actually, it's a prayer. Yeah. 
thank you, uh, Mr. President, the officers. I'd like to welcome all of you, and uh, our secretary showed up. Thank you, my, my niece here. How many uh, delegates at large are here with us? Delegates at large, please. Raise your hand, identify yourself. Basically, this is your work session. And also, how many uh, affiliation delegates are here? Affiliation that's going to be doing the voting tomorrow and the day after. This really is your work session, and uh, uh, this this year we talked about um, the big push is uh, getting our voice to be heard out there. That's why we took these uh, knowledgeable people, explain why our voice needs to be heard, not just among us, but out to Congress, all the way from the your your regional officials, state levels, national level. We need each and every one of us to be talking about this. That's the, the whole idea behind why a lot of this is going. And then again, relatives that uh, don't understand our language, our kid, kid, uh, what we're saying here, I, I do apologize. So uh, English language seems to be the common one that brings us together. So I will be uh, talking English. And I want to thank you also for coming down to our homeland. Uh, my clan is the Reed clan. I was born for the Bitterwater clan. My paternal clan is Edgewater from the Zuni Way uh, people. And also on my, uh, uh, my, my, my father's side is the uh, Touchy. Those were the warriors that had the uh, red streak across their forehead. These are uh, all my protectors. I'm also married to in two a mini goats clan. There's a lot of them out here. That's how we relate to the, my relatives here locally. They understand what I'm talking about, but they can stay up with it. So when you have visitors, you pay attention to them in your home. That's why you use a language that they understand. Otherwise, they're gonna feel like, well, what are they talking about? You know, why did I come here? So please bear with me. I know she you though. And then again, also, we're talking about this ARFA. In 1994, in that era, I was privileged to uh, house sit and babysit two, two elder couples. One of them said his name is the Dr. Truman Sornhai Daly, and the other one was his wife, uh, Lavana Kashawi Daly. And they were talking about this. Nobody was really around my sister's house. My sister's here today, and I was house-sitting them. And they were talking about this. And one of the things that he alluded to was, uh, the grandmother said, There's a, there was some rope in the house. Let me, let me back up a little bit. And they were trying to, they were asking him questions. And uh, I'll sit at the table with my grandma. That's how I met, I greeted her that way. She says, Truman, Talk to this young man. He might be a leader today, someday. And he just, they're talking over there. And some of those robins, they're, they're gone, you know. And um, he sat there. He didn't listen to her. She raised her voice. She says, Truman, I'm talking to you. Those men already know what they're doing. And I don't think they're going to do what you're telling them. This young man's got a clear mind. Talk to him right here. Oh, I felt bad for my grandpa. Oh, golly. So, and one of the things that he said was, as a young person, your faith, you're going to have to get in there somewhere and start talking about the political side of it. Because he was just, uh, got off the phone with Senator Daniel Inouye. A great man. Pitch a, a oracle. Words that penetrated the ears of Congress. And um, that was the 94 uh, Indian, uh, Emerging Indian Religious Freedom Act Amendment. That's what we're talking about. And it's a slim thing that's holding us together. So we're talking all about this. And as uh, the vice president of this organization, your work's a lot of the, you're like a janitor. You're cleaning up a lot of these and what have you. And granted, I had a younger brother here earlier. When I was president, he was saying, 
person. Uh, I want to say something, but uh, you know, take care of your little brother. You can see those things. But uh, there was a lot of uh, inconsistency in some of the bylaws. And that's where I come in as the bylaw chair with the uh, Native American Church in North America. So in looking at this, how Native American Church of North America, we started going with doing different things. Why did our executive officers do these things? Why are we addressing it today? Because our bylaws didn't have no teeth. They wanted to do things in a way where it's contrary to the grandma, the grandpa, the children back home trying to use this medicine to, to pray for themselves for a better way of life. Those, in my opinion, at that time was trampled on. So for that reason, looking at this ARFA, we have to be consistent. Each and every one of us, whether we're a member of this organization or not, we have to be consistent and have an ownership in this organization we have and their bylaws. You will see some in the bylaws here, they'll say, um, just an example. On page five of your article, this is for the delegates at large and the affiliation delegates and the executive officers. And I use a lot of my brother's recommendations, Justin. I use the Black Law Dictionary. It seems to be uh, prevalent, ongoing. So I'm not going to go through every one of them, but you will have a chance to review them in your meeting. And you're going to act on them. how you do it, how you're going to make it. These are my recommendations only as your uh, uh, bylaws chair. So on page five of your bylaws, if you have them somewhere, uh, this is what it reads currently. It's under Article 3, Section 3, and A, what the current language says. A, a NACNA member may inform non-Indians that non-Indians cannot participate and ingest the sacrament peyote in a bona fide religious ceremony. So the only thing to have an ownership in this the proposed amendments go something like this. A, a NSC member shall not and may. You know what I'm saying? You take it upon yourself to say, whoa, do it this way. This is what our bylaw says. Or if I have may in there, I say, well, I don't know. But he's an elder like my chair. I better kind of, I'm a little scared of him. So I'll just let it slide. We need to get away from that in our organization in North America. That's the reason I put a Native American church member shall inform non-Indians that non-Indians cannot participate and in just a second of peyote in a bona fide religious ceremony. The bylaws are probably one of the last things you will look at because it's, it's not exciting. It's not news gathering. It's not like read the sports page like, the Denver Nuggets won by five points or something like that, which is exciting. But this is what the crux, the crux of our organization is. The elders that put these together back since 1918 up to now. Times change. Sometimes we're still driving the 1918 Model A, and here we are in 2023 uh, Caddy. So our bylaws is kind of like that. And I just wanted to bring that about and uh, talk about uh, uh, our bylaws, what I want to do. So basically, somebody's going to say, the language they're using is they're beginning to get away from masculine. They're beginning to say psychedelic. So as far as our bylaws go, we need to be uh, stringent. And uh, how do you advance this up, nephew? Can you manage this one? And uh, try to, that's just it. So basically there's seven of them in here. Um, one of them is, uh, I, I, I want to share with you is, the property in uh, Marondo City, Texas, is no longer under the jurisdiction of North America. Church of Oklahoma took it over, so. And one of them is, uh, what I wanted to say is, there's gotta be something else for the vice president to do. And in that area, um, okay. Here. 
Here's another one. This happened up at North Dakota last year. At, uh, is uh, where the roadmen are sponsored of a bona fide religious ceremony or an affiliated chapter NAC member may not, may notify local law enforcement of alleged non-compliance with the public law 103-344 so that NAC and a member work to preserve and protect our sacrament, peyote from use by non-Indians. Well, again, you may, you may not do. But the change is, you shall. Somebody's got to take ownership of it and say, whoa, stop here. We don't do it this way. We have public law 103, 344. Therefore, I shall tell you, I shall inform, it's incumbent upon the sponsor or whoever's running the leader in that uh, organization. So, um, next one was what here? I'll go through real quick here. Some of these are just uh, uh, a real simple one, one I'm talking about. Here's a, another one again, where an NAC member may contact the local law enforcement system <coughs> for suspected use of illicit drugs in conjunction with NAC prayer services. Uh, what I recommend to the affiliation delegates is C, A, NAC member shall contact the local law enforcement official to report suspected use of alcohol or illicit drugs in conjunction with NAC prayer services. And that's the one that happened at our convention uh, a, a year ago. So based on that, here's another one I wanted to share with you here. Uh, these are the seven ones that I, I was able to bring up to this convention. There's others more addressed at the mid-year um, the mid-year um, conference. Here's a new proposal that I believe we should adhere to and add on to our proposed amendment. Page 7, Article 4, Section A and F. F shall obtain express consent from the membership to act on behalf of the NAC and A on business issues with organization, etc., pertaining to NAC and A. In other words, the executive officers, we don't want you, us to lead you off the cliff. If we do something on your behalf, we're going to go back to you. We're going to say, listen, this is what we did for these reasons. And it's going to be to the governing body that's going to say, Nope, you guys done it wrong, so take it back out. There's a ring to that organization. Or they can say, yes, we like that. We'll give our blessings to you. When you give the authority to the executive official with their attorneys, where's my brother? That's what you're going to have. Uh, my brother Milton talked about it. He said the attorneys took off with it. Now that, that those attorneys are on the other side now, trying to share our way of worship, our way of life with someone that has no business using our sacred medicine. So saying that, that's going to be also uh, looking at you tomorrow and uh, Saturday, please uh, disseminate it to you. I try to tell your delegates at large that this is what uh, needs to be told to them. There's copies out there, and I've, I've been disseminated as much as I can. This one is just a change. Uh, like I said, the old current language said it's still in there. C, Article 4, Section 9C. C. Uh, Vice President shall be responsible for the maintenance of arbor, tables, and grill at the Cardenas residence in Redondo City, Texas, and receive suggestions for future improvement. Like I said, we have no more jurisdiction over that. Somebody else bought the place. So in place of that, rather than just give the, the chair of the uh, laws, uh, bylaws committee, C, 
update the NAC in a standard operating procedure, which is the SOP, to the current bylaws annually. We can talk all we want to, how great we are. We can go to Congress, we can do joint statements, and we can do bring in medicine men and all these uh, wise sages. But we have to have an operating procedure that my nephew, when he was president, Frank Davis Jr., put that together. So we need to know the specific to our bylaws. There's an organizational chart that the president and his staff put together that has to go in there somewhere where it addresses the specifics of our bylaws. That's the other part of it. That's kind of like the, the feel for the fire, you know, like the firewood, this SOP. You really haven't heard too much of it yet, but it's out there. So that's what the vice president should be also updating. That he just don't sit there and uh, look important with all these uh, high powered officials here. Um, also, the other one, which is very critical. This one you really need to pay attention to. Uh, delegates at large, affiliation delegates. I propose by the committee that on page 10 that we add Article 6, Section 4, B. B, the executive committee, which is the officers, delegates at large in each state, or the annual convention delegates may establish various committees at times to address proposal issues, etc., confronted at NEC and A. Said committee can be dissolved at completion of the test, which doesn't mean they're a standing committee forever. They can be dissolved at the end of, of their tasks. So we have that. Uh, otherwise, we would have uh, all, 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 all manners of different committees standing there, uh, clogging up uh, the president's uh, initiative. And as, as a vice president, I have to stay quiet, silently, stay vigil on what he's doing, try to proofread, whatever. And then uh, if there is something I feel like is amiss, I've researched it, I'll let him know. That's, that's the job of, the, uh, of uh, the vice president. The other one is the current language that's on page 13, article 6B, where it says, every act or decision done are made by a majority of delegate at large present at an officer's meeting duly held at which a quorum is present shall be regarded as the act of the NAC. In other words, the executive officers or the delegate at large they can get together and make a take action on behalf of the entire NAC and A. And uh, and that's the final the final say on it. But here's the proposed amendment to stem that authority back to the membership. The same place where it says, page 13, article 6, section 6B. Every act or decision shall be done, sh 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 every act or decision done or made by a majority of the delegates at large present at an officer's meeting duly held at which a quorum is present may be regarded as an act of the NEC in A. Such act shall be ratified at the annual convention. That is what I was talking about. The delegates at large and the executive officers, they made a decision that's going to affect the whole organization. When that is done, we need to give it back to you at the annual convention. Are you going to accept it or not? Again, this is placing the authority back in your hand where it just doesn't wander off and said this decision was made like this. So if you, if you have an organization, you can pretty well much understand why sometimes memberships, others don't have a say in it. All of a sudden, only the officials, these people in power, they're the only one that's dictating a lot of things. That produces male content. That produces division. So this is my role I'm doing. There are other mores that we identify, which we'll be working also to update our current bylaws. Um, 
But uh, like I said, this is going to be in your packets. Take a look at it. And you're welcome to change it a minute the way you like it. I, I'm not saying this is how it's going to look. It's going to be in your hands of the affiliation delegates and the delegates at large. Tell us how you want it in your bylaws written. That's, that's all I'm asking right here. So I'm, I'm your, uh, I guess you're kind of like your computer type thing. That I'll do what you tell me to do and we'll put that and the membership can vote on it. And I want to use that so uh, that's the portion of it and five o'clock is rolling around pretty, pretty quick to start our agenda meeting. And uh, again, I want to thank you and uh, also the president and the officers that are here. Thank you very much. I just want to thank our bylaw chair here. <coughs> so, we have a um, question yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, the only one I want to mention is uh, over there at New Town. We did all of this and it was turning on the Wednesday. And then, uh, then it was approved and then I was waiting for uh, copy of the bylaws where a lot of those were inserted and it was changed and I kept asking about it so I, I don't have a copy of the changes. Oh this is yours. Here's mine. Yeah, don't grab the wrong one. Yeah. Um, be really careful. Um, <coughs> there are out uh, there and um, Yes, and I want to thank you, uh, delegate uh, from uh, Steamboat Canyon. He, he made a, a very substantial motion, second by Tiber City uh, organization, and um, to pass the amendments to all the bylaws that went in. And this was the latest copy that went out. I sent a PDF to our secretary, and um, it should be out there. The way, the way, the way I see it, so I'm not for sure if I still got it here. Hang on. Okay, so it's, yeah, so we'll, 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 we'll give you a copy. Let me, I'm trying to show you where I, it's signed off, it's official. Maybe you can give me your email, I can mail it to you too. Yeah, that's uh, the 18th one. That's the, the latest copy. So I'll put it on your email. I'll send it to you. Okay. Um, I think that answers pretty much. Um, I know. Well, um, I don't know if you all want to stick around for the agenda meeting, but. It's kind of, uh, we're just going to go over our, our business uh, agenda tomorrow. If the delegates could kind of maybe come to the center of these um, first five um, seats here. We'll, uh, tomorrow we're going to have it um, reserved for the voting delegates. So I um, encourage you all to uh, come back around tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> we're going to, uh, you know, continue on the, um, the, uh, the goodness here for our, our organization. So hopefully uh, some of you um, got some good, um, you know, some um, updates. You know, I wish um, we could uh, be this, do this all the time, but this is, you know, the best that we can do. You know, so I'll um, give it a few uh, minutes here to we'll get started with our uh, agenda. Our delegates at large, can you raise your hand again? Yeah, our delegates. Can you guys sign the uh, sign-up sheet? Uh, one, two.
three, four, five. Delegates gets that large. Six. Convention delegates. Voting delegates for this year. Spots where the first five rows are going to be reserved for you, you all tomorrow. So um, I know last year we had some kind of um, we were kind of complaining that our officers were talk, you know, talking down on the delegates. No, you guys are you know, kind of burst it this, this year. So. so now you're talking down on us. So in a nice way. NAC ways. <coughs> so. Uh, Everyone could have uh, the voting delegates this year. You guys can move to the center. Mr. White is here. You know, Mr. Dustin is You guys can kind of move to the center. And then we'll kind of go with the uh, delegates that are here. Yeah, we got the delegates from the Sunday school and 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 the Sunday This one is, um, she'll show you, the bylaw agenda, yeah. Well, let's have it at 5 in the morning. <laughs> I think uh, it's not too much new pressing issues, so it'll be my quick. It's already a rough draft. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's not, not too much on there. Yeah. Uh, so. It should be all right. I'm going to shave my head. Ritter, how are you? Did you give the bike to him tomorrow? <laughs> He's <laughs> going to go to sleep. Hey, Frank, how you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, I'm going to see you. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. No idea. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
So at this time, um, we'll go ahead and uh, get started here. I know um, everyone uh, wants to catch their supper and get everything ready here. So I just want to thank the speakers that talked. I want to thank everyone for listening and for uh, getting caught up in uh, the updates of, uh, of the NACNA. You know, so um, I want to welcome you all once again to the uh, 74th Annual the Agenda Meeting. So tomorrow, uh, good relatives, these first, these five rows here are going to be reserved for you all. So, um, you, you know, we want everybody to kind of stay right here. We kind of don't want everybody all scattered. So that way it will be easier for us to count the votes. So if we all could kind of um, be in tune of that. And um, um, I really want to thank the host, you know, for, um, you know, having uh, this uh, convention and hosting it. It takes a lot. It's a lot of work. You know, but um, it's always good, you know, to start, you know, early and, you know, get everything, you know, in order so we won't be, you know, rushing around last minute and doing all these kind of things, you know. But nevertheless, you know, we're just uh, trying our best as Native American Church uh, relatives, you know. So I'm going to thank, um, thank uh, Mr. Hardy, you know, uh, this morning, an uh, awesome um, turnout over there at the youth day flag raising all the activities and speakers you know it was really nice a nice area too nice area the teepees you know are we already feeling the good vibes and good energies and prayers already you know so um i'm going to thank uh, all the delegates for uh, showing up here for being here so we're gonna uh, turn this time over here to uh to jesse here in a few moments but this, uh, we don't have any pressing, really pressing issues, relatives. We don't uh, really have to, like, we have to vote or we have to, you know, it has to be said today or tomorrow or the weekend, you know. So we're just trying to keep the vibe, you know, kind of like how it was today, you know, the reality of things. And um, we're trying to keep uh, everyone updated, you know, what's going on. And, you know, we have a lot of handouts that's going to be tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have uh, all the voting delegates, everything what Ryan was talking about earlier. Everyone's going to be receiving all of those from the resolutions, the statements, you know, all the uh, the letters from uh, the U.S. House, the White House, everything. You know, but uh, I know before that, you know, we have um, Native American Church, of, uh, a Facebook page. So everything we're doing is on the Facebook page. So... We try to be accountable and transparent as possible, you know, to let you all know what's going on. You know, and then I have my monthly uh, president's report, you know, every month. You know, so that way uh, I want you all to, um, you know, know what's happening, know what's going on. Because, you know, um, <clears throat> and then our voting, uh, our delegates, uh, our delegates at large from every state, you know, um, I want to thank you all for your upholding to the do. I believe we have a new one here, I believe. Um, from uh, okay. Omaha, or Dell, I Dell. So uh, let's give him a round of applause. He's a new, uh, he just got elected. Uh, so he's uh, one of the. Uh, he's on board now. So uh, <clears throat> so I believe we have 15 delegates at large now, and I know some are still on in route. You know, so I'm going to thank. Uh, Everyone for being here for the uh, agenda meeting and all what's taking place here. So. Oh, he has it on his. Yeah, yeah. I can access. He wants to use yours because okay. mine is a little bit. Right, please. Okay, take it. I was gonna. It's it's on this USB. So just gonna do USB and it's on there.
very last one for discussion. Draft agenda, I should be. Yeah, draft business agenda. D, I think it's alphabetical right now. It's in alphabetical order, so it would be. Just read the whole thing. Yeah, I'm going to put it up. Okay. So thank you all for, um, we're trying to get um, it hooked up to the laptop here. So a few moments. <clears throat> so that way uh, we're going to have the edits. And once it's uh, finalized, and then we'll um, make copies and send the email out for everyone. You guys have that work uh, business agenda in those packets or no? Those red. You have it. There's a, a one. In the, which one is the red one? The, the one that came out should, last week. Uh, I was on the panel tomorrow morning at eight. Yeah. And then I found this one last night, and uh, it says one o'clock. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing my presentation. One o'clock tomorrow. I don't know which one's the right one. Yeah, we'll, we'll explain it better here. <clears throat> there's a convention, uh, there's five pager that was for their magazine. And then we have the bylaw agenda, NAC name business agenda. That's what we're going to go over here today. And then all the presenters are on here. Agenda there, Native American Church of North America, 74th Annual Convention, Winter Rock, Arizona, June 16, 17, 2023, 9 to 
a.m. to 4 p.m. And a uh, call to order. And then um, our B, invocation. C, posting of colors. And our D, welcome address. E, roll call. F, approval of agenda. And G, approval of previous minutes. So that one there, um, I, always, I always had a question on the, they don't really explain it in the bylaws when they say previous minutes. What do they mean? Convention minutes from last year? Or do they mean <laughs> all the, uh, the minutes? I know I've been giving Joel this um, question here for about a year now. I'm, I'm not really, um, could, yeah, I know maybe somebody could help me <laughs> understand that better. In the last minutes of your last meeting. Okay. Yes. Okay, I, I, that's the way I took it too. But then we have some stating the voting delegates. Could you explain that better? <laughs> uh, it, it is tricky. Confusing me. Um, <laughs> sister, uh, it doesn't stipulate in the bylaws uh, last meeting. Um, the mid-year minutes meeting were the delegates at largest meeting not the affiliation delegates like the annual convention so it's for them the one that attended that meeting the delegates are largely approve it or do we just go ahead and approve it at the convention that that is the question you know what i'm saying um no i don't can you explain that a little bit more okay the previous minutes is this is a an, an annual business meeting and then last year they had, a, they, they, they had a meeting. That's not approved yet, that minutes from last year. We had a meeting, in um, a quarterly meeting in last September. It was supposed to be in October, but we moved out to September. And then we had another quarterly meeting at uh, the mid-year. We did not bother the annual convention business meeting. That's theirs. The, the affiliation delegates, that's theirs. That's why we haven't uh, approved it yet. The question is, and, and I'm open to suggest